and unreasonable seizures and searches shall not be violated. And you're not going to, by the way, you're not going to go in unless you have a warrant that actually describes what you're going for. Now, you know they didn't get a warrant because we have this belief now that if somebody's safety is at risk, we don't need a warrant. We can just blast in. <laughs> That's the hot pursuit argument. That right. might work for hot pursuit. I'm not sure it works here. No, it, uh, it, it doesn't to my mind. You know, and in just in just a few years ago, I would have said what we're talking about uh, was a ludicrous proposition, but uh, the something scary has happened to uh, the uh, left, uh, left center of our culture. They are as crazy as anybody I've ever seen over the nomination of uh, Donald Trump, and they uh, they feel that all like they're losing power, and this is a way they can justifiably get some of that power back. Because what's it about again? Public safety, the common right. good. All this nonsense that they love to talk about, which is, by the way, nonsense. Uh, there, they. And, and there's nothing you can't do in the name of public safety. That's right. I mean, that's right. You can't. I mean, you know, they're not going to spread any disease. So I'm going to tell you. Here's my prediction. The next, the next step in this thing. And anybody thinks it's not coming to Iowa, it is coming to Iowa. The first, the first step they took, they mandated vaccination. Second step they're taking is trying to get rid of all the exemptions, and they've been pretty good at that. And then third step they're going to take is they're going to start restricting your movement, and it's not just going to be children that don't have the measles vaccine. It's going to be you and me that don't have the flu vaccine. Right. You want. That is going to be the next step in this whole thing. If they, if you don't have the flu vaccine, you cannot go anywhere. That's going to be the new thing. You're going to have to wear, like, instead of a scarlet A, you're going to have to wear a you know, a, a V for vaccine or something on your forehead. And we're going to have some smug woman uh, come to our door with her pursed blue lips and tell us we have to do as she says we tell her to do or tell, tell us to do, or we're going to be in big trouble. That's yeah, where we're, we're going. Into the That's right. You know, she'll bring the police back and drag us out of there if she, if, if she wants. And she'll be one of those longtime party workers with the Democratic Party. There's no doubt in my mind. And I, I got to tell you, at that point, I'm going to let them drag me out of my house and take me to jail. <laughs> in fact, in fact, if the rule is that you can't go to the local bar without being vaccinated, I'm going to go to a local bar. I'm going to go to the local grocery store. I'm going to go wherever it is to get arrested because that's what this is going to take. It's going to we're going to have people are going to have to do like Gandhi and like Martin Luther King is going to have to be passive resistance. Not violent resistance like the left is doing, but just stand up and say, if you think this is worth putting me in jail for, go for it. They might. That, that might happen. How many people? You know, we've already had a, a mother in jail because she not not refused to vaccinate her children. She just didn't want to use the strict vaccination schedule. That's that's you know, which is which is part of the problem. You know, all the science. Well, I can't say all the science. The, the science about vaccination that. That, that real scientists know, if you look at the statistics, most of the vaccine injury occurs in children under three. So whether or not these vaccines are the right thing to do or not, I can tell you your chance of being injured are less if you let the child get older and have to start vaccinating after three, which is what she wanted to do. And she got put into jail in Maryland. Remember, that was a few years ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, the left wants us to enter their strange world. Come into their weird movie. You know, I, I don't want to get off topic. No, really, they, I, I don't want to get off topic, but uh, the, the the emphasis on transgender now has got, has moved into the field of women's wrestling. And what is, you know, women's wrestling, most, uh, and I'm a wrestling fan, college wrestling fan, Olympic wrestling fan. Uh, most, uh, most people who are connected to wrestling, some big names like Dan Gable and Kale Sanderson, understand that if wrestling is going to survive as a sport, women have to get involved. So we've had some women's programs spring up around the country. Well, who wants to take part in women's wrestling? Transgender men. And what a surprise. They win the they wrestling. Win. They win the wrestling tournaments and they're pretty rough with the girls, by the way. Yeah. They're pretty, you know, yeah. the girls who are out for wrestling are pretty tough girls, but uh, they're getting beat up pretty bad by these by, by these guys who've apparently been castrated and now calling themselves women. I didn't know well, that was all there was to it. Look at and that was on the Olympics, you know, who was it? Somebody came in second in a, in a 
recent Olympic sport right. or international competition, and she had the audacity to, to suggest the transgender who won that wasn't fair and, and it shouldn't be allowed, and now she's being ostracized. Wait, she's being, oh yeah, she's you know, a... See, this is this is the death of the whole Title IX thing and the whole, you know, women's sports if you're just going to turn it over to men. And you can call them what you want, but unfortunately they have the biologic advantage of being men. Yeah, if that's they right. Want to wear lipstick and put on a skirt and do a transgender change. I, I, you know, that's their life. I'm not. I'm a libertarian. I think do what you do. It you know, right. literally blows your skirt up in this case. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the problem is, the problem is, there's a physiologic, real world difference between men and women. It doesn't completely go away. And you know, you know Bruce Jenner is still six feet two and two hundred and five pounds, barrel chested and broad shouldered. I don't care what he wants to calling himself now. He still looks like a guy in a dress. I mean, yeah. I mean, he's had hormone treatments. I don't believe he's had the surgery, but he's still calling himself a woman. It's you know, and if any, if we say that's wrong or laugh at it, uh, in some quarters we're in trouble. It's absurd. It's a fantasy. Well, it's just, and and in some cases there's a safety issue here. So so like wrestling, I would think. I mean, I think there is a safety issue. So, so, there's a fact is that women are more likely to have joint injuries because we're by nature more loose jointed. Now you throw a guy in there who's got men's joints men's muscle, you know, it's not going to be good. But years ago, I could see the writing on the wall years ago when in San Francisco, this is probably 15 years ago, San Francisco being the leader in craziness, you know. Well, they decided that when they arrested somebody, the, the San Francisco Police Department's rule was when you got arrested, you could designate what gender you wanted to be put into. In other words, you, you de if you define yourself as a woman, no matter what you look like, if you say that I define myself as a woman, then you're going to go into the women's cell. Okay, now, if I were a guy, you know, let's say I'm a 240-pound muscle-bound college weightlifter, but, you know, got topped for something ridiculous, have no understanding of how to survive in prison, I'm not a gangbanger, I don't have this experience, I think I'm going to identify as a woman. <laughs> you know? I mean, that's the problem with this whole thing. It's just completely uh, crazy. Well, it is. Uh, what's going on in New York and Arizona now? You texted me that something was going on in New well, York. Well, that the, the New York, the New York is the issue where you they have a whole county, Rockford, New York, County of Rockford. You cannot, your children cannot leave the house or leave. They cannot be in public spaces, which basically means they can't leave the house, right? Um, without being vaccinated, because <laughs> they have a measles outbreak. Now, I just want to point out that when all of us as kids used to get measles. We didn't worry about measles outbreaks because when you get measles as a small child, and, and it's probably of the childhood disease is one of the worst ones in terms of, you know, morbidity, mortality, but not in America for the much, for most part. Um, we just didn't worry about it. But now they're worried about it because adults are getting measles. And the reason is, and they know this, the, the, the immunization experts know this, that when you get immunized with a needle rather than getting the disease, you don't really have full lifetime immunity. Your immunity is inadequate. It's right. not the same as getting you know, getting the measles when you were three. <laughs> so that's the problem here. So anyway, they're forcing people to stay in their homes. So that's Rockford. And then uh, Arizona is where they kick the door in on this one right. because she didn't right. take her normal, her normal afebrile child to the emergency room. And what these things are, are attacks on individuality and the very idea of individual freedom. You may not make your own choices. Now, I know right. the smoke-free ban is, was so popular with a lot of people, but I'll tell you what the smoke-free ban really adds up to. A group of people just don't like cigarette smoking. They don't want to be bothered with it. So it doesn't matter if someone owns a restaurant or a tavern and they would like to allow their patrons to indulge in illegal behavior right. like smoking, uh, you must be told that you're too dumb or too dangerous or too careless or too irresponsible. So the state has to move in and decide for you to keep smoking out of your private property. That has always yep. been a dangerous idea to me. And I concede the fact that cigarettes are very dangerous. Uh, but if people want to go in some place and smoke cigarettes, that's their business. That's their business. And, and that is, is. is only... I mean, I hate I hate smoking, and I'm with you. But I, but the problem is that once you cross, that's where you're right. That's where we cross the line. And once you cross the line on the idea that safety trumps your constitutional rights, that's right. 
there's no end to that. And that's where we are right now. So you can expect an exponential uh, rise in this. Yeah, public safety uh, yeah. always trumps individual liberty. Or even the idea of the individual. Let's not forget that the li that the liberals of the world scoff at the idea of the individual. They want to make the big policies for big groups of people and herd people into different pens and make little rules for each for each group. It's a it's a very dangerous time. But uh, if there's one thing I'm glad of now is that Donald Trump was elected president because it has brought the true nature of liberals to the forefront. They are, they are nothing but tyrants, and they're enraged at the idea that they ever would lose power, and, and they're actually a little dangerous right now. Uh, that Adam well, and they never, and they never really, I mean, they don't even want to, they don't even want to save us from the Southern invasion, which is an invasion. It is. Uh, at some point, you know, uh, I mean, uh, you, it, it's, it's one thing after another. So I'm with you. I mean, I, you know, I'm, I, I'm a libertarian for Trump. I think, thank God we've got somebody that actually is throwing some common sense here about, and I'm not saying he's a big constitutional scholar. He is not. But he's got the point. At least he, he wants America to succeed. He has and, shown us. He has, he has shown us who liberals are. Uh, and they have uh, every situation has angry, shame based accusations that are false on their face. But uh, the big liberal newspapers and uh, CNN and MSNBC will back them up all the way. Uh, it's uh, it, it's it's an ugly, ugly time. I don't know if anybody's ever read Darkness at Noon, but it's time to go get a copy. <laughs> Darkness. Well it's really true. And I'll tell you the other one that is a very good book. It's called Technocracy Rising. And it kind of talks about where this, where this really, I think this is where it really got started. The technocracy movement in the 30s is alive and well. And the point is they have the, 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 um, uh, uh, what do I want to say? The, there, there's a, an idea that they're going to go on this board that will engineer the world because Democracy and freedom is just too messy. And, you know, people think it's like a, a myth, but it's not. They're, they're you know, it's like, um, I, I'm blanking on this. It's not the Bloomberg, but it's the other organization that has 300 board members. And, like, Bill Clinton is one, um, you know, Nelson Rockefeller and, and Brzezinski. And David Rockefeller and I think the big news Brzezinski started it. But it's basically, these guys are taking top people around the world, putting them in places of power like the IMF, and making decisions for it. And this vaccine program, that's part of it. You know, then you marry big money, like big pharma money with it. You've got, you've got a lot of power, and they're changing the narrative, and we got to change it back. Well, you know, the uh, the Democrats surrendered to big money a long time ago. They did. Um, back, back when Bill Clinton was president, they gave up the ghost and surrendered to big money. Oh, yeah. That's all they're about now. I mean, uh, we're, we're still hearing about why doesn't Trump release his tax returns? Fine. When are we going to find out what Hillary Clinton told the Wall Street bankers? Because she won't release her notes or, or, uh, or anything about her speeches uh, to uh, places like Goldman Sachs. Oh, yeah. It, it, again, why are we investigating her for her Russian connection, which is real? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, which you know, she's it's her campaign that paid for the Russian dossier on Trump. Yeah, she's well, the one that sold our uranium, sold our. If you're worried about defense, she sold your, our uranium to the Russians. Are you, you do? Me? Well, yeah. Well, when Bill Clinton was president, he was going to sell uh, sell the uh, Long Beach Naval Station to the Chinese before there was such an uproar. I, you know, I I remember the oh, Clinton yeah. years well. <laughs> Well, and if you also you remember, like Obama got caught on film talking to it wasn't Putin, it was I think Med Med. It was one Med, of the Russians, Med, yeah. Yeah, and Med, I, mean, I can't pronounce it right now, but Med, Med, yeah, anyway, and who said just wait till I'm reelected and then I'll have more freedom. I'll have a little more flexibility there. That's yeah, right flexibility to, to work with you. <laughs> and then they're worried about Trump and the Russians. Wow. Which I'm not worried about the Russians. But, I'm not, I'm but not if either. I were, I shouldn't be. I wouldn't worry about Trump and the Russians. All right, <laughs> Doctor Lee. Doctor Lee Heap has been our guest. Thank you, Lee. 
Thank you. All right. This is AM 1400 KVFD, the voice of Fort Dodge. Divine Intervention is online at yourfortdodge.com. On Twitter at jmike1400. It's 228. The news is next. Hey, I'm Andy. If you don't know me, it's probably because I'm not famous. But I did start a men's grooming company called Harry's. The idea for Harry's came out of a frustrating experience I had buying razor blades. Most brands were overpriced, overdesigned, and out of touch. At Harry's, our approach is simple. Here's our secret. We make sharp, durable blades and sell them at honest prices for as low as $2 each. We care about quality so much that we do some crazy things, like buy a world-class German blade factory. Obsessing over every detail means we're confident in offering a 100% quality guarantee. Millions of guys have already made the switch to Harry's, so thank you if you're one of them. And if you're not, we hope you give us a try with this special offer. Get a Harry starter set with a five-blade razor, weighted handle, shave gel, and a travel cover. All for just three bucks, plus free shipping. Just go to harrys.com and enter 4343 at checkout. That's harrys.com, code 4343. Enjoy. Your news, your town, your station. KVFD News When It Breaks. Good afternoon. I'm Alex Benzigal with the KVFD Afternoon News. The Iowa House has unanimously approved a bill that would increase the penalties for animal mistreatment. The measure approved Thursday by a vote of 96 to 0 moves to the Senate. The bill heightens the criminal penalties for animal abuse and neglect, animal torture and abandonment. Animal welfare advocates have long considered Iowa among the worst states for mistreatment of animals in puppy mills. The state has thousands of dogs and more than 200 large-scale breeding operations. Under the House-backed bill, failure to provide an animal with access to food, drinkable water, sanitary shelter, veterinary care, and grooming could be considered animal abuse, punishable by two years in prison. A second offense would be a felony carrying up to five years in prison. Animal torture, which is intentionally causing prolonged suffering or death would be a felony punishable up to five years. Abandoning an animal could carry a 30-day jail sentence, a year in jail if the animal is injured, or two years if it sustains a serious injury. The Fort Dodge Community School District announced on Thursday that Stacey Laird will be the next Fort Dodge Senior High School principal starting with the 2019-2020 school year. Laird currently serves as an assistant principal at FDSH. She replaces Ken Hayes, who accepted a position in the educational leadership program at the University of Northern Iowa. Organizers of a rally a few hours before Saturday's presidential candidate forum in Storm Lake say shrinking market options for farmers must be addressed. As Radio Iowa's O.K. Henderson reports, many of the Democratic candidates who've been traveling through Iowa this year already have focused on consolidation and mergers in the agricultural sector. Last August, New Jersey Senator Cory Booker proposed a moratorium on all corporate mergers. He argues federal antitrust laws aren't being followed and that's creating real problems for family farmers. Booker said during a recent Radio Iowa interview that the result is stagnant wages while corporate profits are at an 80-year high. So these trends continue. The very sort of fundamentals of our democracy are going to begin to unravel, and you're going to see a lot more people calling for more extremism uh, uh, in our country because they don't believe the democratic system or the economic system can work for them anymore. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders made a campaign swing through Iowa earlier this month and denounced concentration in the meatpacking industry as well as the Bayer-Monsanto merger. Neither Sanders nor Booker will be in Storm Lake for the Saturday afternoon candidate forum, but two other U.S. senators who are running for president will be. Senator Amy Klobuchar has been telling Iowa audiences she's been able to bridge the rural-urban divide in Minnesota. Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren has been calling for the breakup of monopolies and this week pledged to appoint federal officials who would reverse anti-competitive mergers like the Bayer-Monsanto merger. Radio Iowa, I'm O.K. Henderson. I'm Alex Benzigal with the KVFD Afternoon News. Have a great day. Here's a look at how the markets close today. May corn down 17 and a half to close at 356 and a half. July down 17 and a half at 366 and a quarter. September corn down 16 at 375. December beans down five and a quarter at 884 and a quarter. July down five and a quarter at 897 and three quarters. August down a nickel at 904 and November down four and three quarters at 919. May wheat down six and three quarters at 457 and three quarters. 
first. Soybean meal unchanged at 306.50. April live cattle down 82 at 125.70. June down 62 at 119. April feeders down 70 cents at 145 and a quarter. May down 90 at 148.77. April lean hogs down 150 at 77.37. May down 235 at 81.32. From the farm desk, I'm Dwayne Merlin. This is AM 1400 KVFD, the voice of 4 Dodge 232. First of all, in the weather, we have a flood warning now until 7 o'clock next Tuesday. Flood warning from now until 7 o'clock next Tuesday. There is a chance of rain later on. Cloudy with a high of 45. Overnight, a chance of rain. Cloudy with a low of 28. A little frosty overnight. Uh, tomorrow, cloudy through mid-morning, then gradual clearing. High only 40. It's going to be very windy. Sunday, sunny with a high of 47 on Monday. Sunny with a high of 54. Tuesday, good chance of snow. How's that grab you? Mostly sunny with a high of 58 on Wednesday. Chance of rain. Partly sunny with a high of 57 on Thursday. A good chance of rain. Otherwise, mostly cloudy with a high of 53. So, yeah, uh, the uh, the colder weather is uh, following us into spring here, and that's all there is to it. Right now, 42 degrees at AM 1400. KVFD, the voice of Ford Dodge. Obituaries this hour brought to you by Gunderson Funeral Home and Cremation Services at 1615 North 15th Street, Fort Dodge. You may contact Gunderson Funeral Home and Cremation Services by calling 515-576-7128 or online at www.gundersonfuneralhome.com. Mr. Thomas Pingle has died. Mr. Thomas Douglas Pingle, 86 years old of Fort Dodge, died Sunday at the Simpson Health Center Friendship Haven here in Fort Dodge. There will be a service honoring the life of Thomas D. Pingle, and that's going to happen at 3 o'clock tomorrow at the First Presbyterian Church in Fort Dodge. There will be a service tomorrow for Thomas Pingle at the First Presbyterian Church here in town with the Reverend Dr. Austin Hill and Reverend Sarah Hill officiating. The, fr- the family will greet friends from 1.30 to 245 in the commons at the First Presbyterian Church, and that's tomorrow, of course. Obituaries this hour brought to you by Gunderson Funeral Home and Cremation Services at 1615 North 15th Street, Fort Dodge. You may contact Gunderson Funeral Home and Cremation Services by calling 515-576-7128 or online at www.gundersonfuneralhome.com. This is AM 1400 KVFD, the voice of Fort Dodge. It's 235 and 42 degrees. Dave Flattery, City Councilman, will be with us in a couple of minutes at AM 1400 KBFD, the voice of Dodd. With the Quicksilver card from Capital One, you earn unlimited 1.5% cash back on every purchase. Unlimited? Unlimited? Unlimited! 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 Any way you say it, earning unlimited 1.5% cash back on every purchase just sounds good. Capital One. What's in your wallet? What's in your wallet? What's in your wallet? Capital One Bank USA NA. Ever wonder why Europeans seem to speak so many languages? Maybe it's because they use Babbel, the number one selling language learning app in Europe. Babbel's award-winning technology gets you speaking right away, whether you're learning Spanish, French, or German. And best of all, you'll remember what you've learned. I always thought I was bad at languages, but after using Babbel, I can tell you I was just taught the wrong way. Using Babbel's 10 to 15 minute lessons, you can be speaking confidently in your new language within weeks. I was amazed that I could start having real life conversations right away. It was so fast. Now I'm speaking Spanish. Woohoo! <laughs> No wonder Babbel is the number one selling language learning app in Europe. Try it for yourself and see why Babbel is the quick way to get conversational in a new language, like Spanish, French, or more. You can try Babbel for free. Go to Babbel.com or download the app and try it for free. That's Babbel, B-A-B-B-E-L.com, or download the app to try it for free. That's Babbel.com. Elvis and Johnny are back. Alpha Media presents the Elvis and Johnny Tribute with Joseph Hall and Paul E. I said don't stay, it's not the proper thing. Let's don't miss Branson, Missouri Entertainer of the Year, Joseph Hall, officially recognized as one of the top Elvis tribute artists in the world, along with Johnny Cash impersonator Paul E. Friday night, March 29th, in the Cardiff Center at Fort Frenzy. I hear the train coming, 
It's rolling around then. Doors open at 5.30 and the Elvis and Johnny Tribute starts at 7. Tickets are $25 in advance or $30 at the door. Get them now at hy V4 Dodge, Fort Frenzy, the Iowa Outdoor Store, or here at our studios. Bring the whole family to see this tribute to the king of rock and roll and the man in black. As Joseph Hall and Paul Eve present the Elvis and Johnny Tribute. Friday night, March 29th at Fort Frenzy. Brought to you in part by Riley Armstrong Plumbing and Heating, the Iowa Outdoor Store, and Ball Plumbing Fort Dodge. Star Energy Manson, Mackie Motors Lake City, and United Bank of Iowa, Rockwell City, Pocahontas, and Fort Dodge. The Elvis and Johnny Tribute is an Alpha Media event. Flood victims in Nebraska need our help. Alpha Media Fort Dodge is a designated donation site for the thousands of displaced people in Nebraska. Items needed are cleaning supplies, toiletries, diapers and baby wipes, new pillows and blankets, heavy-duty trash bags, individually wrapped snacks, cases of bottled water, pet food, hygiene items, and gently used clothing. If you can help our neighbors in Nebraska, please drop off your donations at our studios, 200 North 10th Street. All items will be delivered to Nebraska this Saturday. Thank you from all of us at Alpha media have you ever bought a snack from a vending machine only to see that donut or bag of chips get stuck on the way down leaving it just out of reach that's how your crops often feel when it comes to phosphorus it's right there but your plants just can't seem to get to it avail t5 phosphorus enhancer from verdesian life sciences reduces the fixation of applied p resulting in 30 to 45 percent more being available for plant uptake on-farm trial results showed that using Avail T5 on your granular pea results in a 3.8% average yield increase, while Avail T5 on your liquid starters and pop-up yields 2.4% more. Contact your local ag retailer to learn more about how Avail T5 can help your plants get more of the applied pea in your crops where they belong. And be sure to ask about the Verdesian Performance Guarantee. Use Avail T5 this coming season, and if you don't get a return on your investment, we will cover any shortfall. Now, how satisfying is that? It's Michael Devine at AM 1400. In the name of justice and the American way of life. With 60 rounds of freedom. Who are you then? Just the fly in the ointment, Hans. The monkey in the wrench. The pain in the ass. If you don't listen to him, you suck. suck. He's sneaky, but he's right. Michael Devine at AM 1400 KVFD. That's right. I am sneaky, but right. I'm a sneaky little sucker, I'll tell you. I think we're going to have uh, Councilman Dave Flattery here for the first time in a long time, which would be terrific, but I have not seen him yet. So uh, I always believe it happens when you see it happen. So um, I just texted Dave a minute ago, and he said he was on his way. But uh, haven't seen him yet. Uh, don't forget to mark uh, your calendar. That's coming up uh, Saturday, April uh, 13th. That's the DSOC 24th Annual Cake Auction. So mark this down. Uh, Saturday, April 13th, the DSOC 24th Annual Cake Auction at Iowa Central East Campus. The doors open at 5, live and silent auctions. Uh, DSOC, of course, is Domestic Sexual Assault Outreach Center. And you can reach them at 515-955-2273 the Domestic Sexual Assault Outreach Center, 515-955-2273. Hope to see you there. Uh, Yeah, buy a great cake, and uh, and, uh, the folks there are doing some very important work, some uh, very important work over there at DSOC. So uh, whatever we can do to help them out, that's going to be great. Uh, Of course, Elvis and Johnny, you're going to appear at uh, Fort Frenzy this evening, so I hope to see you there as well. I can't remember when the uh, door is open now, but I think it's like five or something like that, five o'clock. And uh, yeah, by all means, get your tickets uh, at the door or uh, any other places uh, listed on that promo that I just <laughs> that just ran because we've been talking about it a lot. It should be a good show. Elvis and Johnny back from the dead. Back, <laughs> back from the dead and at Fort Frenzy. And I was sure, sure. That uh, Elvis was dead, but you know, what do I know? What do I know? Coming up at three o'clock, uh, Representative um, Ann, Representative Ann Meyer, and State Senator uh, Tim Kreinbrink. It's always going to be good to see them. So, if you have questions or comments that you'd like to ask to our two representatives, um, get uh, get those questions ready, and then in the next hour, call five one five nine five five fourteen hundred. I'm uh, sorry to see all the uh, farmers who's, uh, well, <laughs> who are below water. And here he comes, ladies and gentlemen, fashionably late. After a long hiatus, he's been teasing us all this time, right. making us beg to have him come back. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Dave Flattery. What do you say, big fella? Hey, Mike. Good. How you doing? <laughs> Gosh, I hadn't seen you so long. I thought perhaps you passed away from old age or something. Nope. No? Put right. bread on the table. I'm busy. You're, you got to put bread on the table. Is that right? <laughs> yep. You are such a man. How you yep. been, Dave? Good Real to good. see you. Good seeing you too, Mike. I, I, I know you want to talk about something, and we're going to get to that. But first, your NCAA pick. Uh, my pick is uh, Duke. I'm pulling for Texas Tech, and uh, we've got a pool at work, and I've got Gonzaga. You got Gonzaga? Yeah, I didn't pick it. I was just the one who I had to pull out of the hat. I got lucky. I got a number one seed. Yeah, yeah. So my my hope is that Texas Tech, because they're a the Big 12, I don't think they're going to do it. Uh, I think that uh, Duke has too much – Although you know they, they didn't they, they they met their their match last Sunday. Boy, they did. I watched the Central game. Florida. Yeah. Um, God, you believe how tall their center was? My oh, God, I know. seven I know. six or something like that. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think Michigan State's going to be tough, uh, but Texas Tech handled Michigan pretty well. Yeah. Last yeah, night, yeah. And, and Michigan just didn't shoot well. But I think that's a reflection of uh, Texas Tech plays real good defense. Um, and, and Texas Tech's really coming along here at the last couple of weeks. They played well. I don't care what they say. Uh, the key to this whole thing is Zion Williams. It really uh, is. I mean, uh, they're all, well, they've got a couple of other great players on Duke, and they do, mm -hmm. but they're not in the same category right. as uh, Zion Williams. He's unbelievable. He, he? he is unbelievable, and I, and I haven't seen anybody else like him in the entire tournament. Yeah. I've seen some really, really talented players, uh, but nobody like this guy. LeBron I mean, James. Uh, well, That'd be about the closest thing to him, LeBron. It would be, yeah, but Zion, and Zion is like LeBron. He's a big, strong young yep. man, and mm -hmm. uh, he's got a fierce competitive streak. Got great feet, great hands, yeah. shoots well, oh, handles yeah. the ball well, very agile. Man, oh, he, he's unbelievable. And, he, and he's kind of a spark plug for the team. Right. I mean, he runs around firing everybody up, uh -huh. and he's always full of joy when he scores, and he's full of joy when everybody else scores. Yeah. I mean, that's important. It really is. I mean, when you're in a tense situation like that, we sometimes forget how – how much mm -hmm. pressure we put young people under. I mean, there's how old is he? Like 19 years old, if that. 19, 20, right? Yeah. Uh, and boy, we put a lot of pressure on. Who, who are you? I haven't been listening to. Who, who's uh, what's Coolman and Nevin? What are they, you talk to those guys? Uh, well, yeah. Uh, I haven't seen Nevin in a couple of weeks, and, I, and he's not coming in today. <laughs> okay. Uh, but uh, you know, mainly the last time Nevin was here, we were focused on. Well, we wanted to see Iowa State move a little further than they did. Yeah. And we were a little disappointed there. I can't, and I'm glad to hear that Steve Prohm is. <laughs> Has had Nine his contract ex extended. I'm a little sad that Fred Hoiberg is going to coach Nebraska. Apparently, yeah, that'll look real weird. Well, yeah, yeah I think that's probably a pretty good opportunity for him. You it know, is. There's nowhere to go but up with Nebraska. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> and, and 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 it's in a good, strong conference. Um, I think that's a good fit. That's where he's born. So he was born in Nebraska. He was born in Nebraska. Didn't know that. Have recruited heavily to play football in college. Uh, to play at Nebraska, so I saw him play here in town when he was in high school with the Ames Little Cyclones. Oh yeah, yeah. Six feet five quarter, a six foot five inch quarterback. He was yeah. something else. Yeah, the little Cyclones in those years were pretty tough. They killed us. That night. I don't want to see him go, but I feel good for for Fred. I think that's a that's a really good opportunity for him. And now he, you know, he he probably won't. He, in Ames, you know, in Iowa State, they loved him. I, you know, I, he oh, won't yeah. he won't have the same maybe honeymoon period that that you would find in Ames. You know, Nebraska is a different different place to coach though he was the mayor he was a mayor he's gonna have to produce right away or you know the boo birds are gonna come oh yeah mm -hmm. so. well i wonder how they feel in uh, nebraska about getting somebody from iowa you know nebraska yeah. nebraska yeah nebraska for years looked down their nose at us you know? right i know i know and, and and they just hate it when we beat them now yeah and that's all the more reason <laughs> for me to love it you know, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah i know you know so. uh, but uh, we'll see what happens i you know fred must have moved away from the Lincoln area when he was just a kid. Well, he because, was, yeah. Right, yeah. right. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, Councilman Dave Flattery is uh, here. I don't suppose you came to talk about fireworks, for God's sake. Uh, yeah, hopefully, we, hopefully we'll put that to bed here in a couple of weeks. Yeah, I hope so. It sounds like there's been <laughs> something reasonable worked out. And, yeah. Uh, you know, I know the public is in the ear of a couple of council people, and I understand they have to respond, but let's, let's not overreact either, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I hope after the first year was a disgrace, and the second year wasn't so bad, hopefully – Hopefully, as we uh, go forward, uh, and uh, you know, I've had some people talk to me, some people who aren't, you know, who are decent uh, stand-up guys, uh, who aren't uh, wimp guys at all, and uh, they tell me they got 
dogs and uh, their dogs really suffer when there's fireworks time. And I, That's where we get most of the complaints is from pet owners, mainly dog owners. Yeah. And boy, they, they, they come out of the woodwork people that uh, yeah, yeah. you had heard from a long time. And I don't like to hear that either. I don't like to hear that going on. And some vets. Yeah. Some vets. I mean, uh, you're a, you're a vet. Do you, yes, do you, I am. Do you, do you read? Do you react to that? Are you, I, you're a strong supporter, though, aren't you? It, I look, and I and I've said <laughs> this before. I kind of got mad at Councilman Allstott when he brought up veterans. It's not it's not that it never happens, but uh, everybody everybody, especially veterans, are changed by experiences in their lives. Dave, you're not a veteran, but you've had experiences in your life that profoundly profoundly affected you. I know mm -hmm. you have. I've had uh, experiences that profoundly profoundly affected me. Some of them were military experiences where I saw some, where I was in situations that were very difficult, very difficult. And I was a 19 year old kid from Algona, Iowa, you know, and that's a, uh, again, we, we forget sometimes what we ask of very young people. Yeah. Oh, I know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I hate for the veterans thing to be brought up because it makes all veterans look like damaged goods who are perpetually screwed up over the war, no matter how long ago it's been. And I, and I just wish we would get off veterans in that regard. I, you know, Mike, I've never heard from a veteran. Haven't you? I've heard from people, oh, veterans are are, 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 are suffering from this. But it's usually the, the pet owners is who I'm hearing from. So I've, yeah. I've never heard directly from, from well, a veteran. Well, I, I would invite any members of the city council to come down to the Marine Corps League steak dinner that's coming up here pretty soon and ask those guys if they're affected by fireworks. <laughs> when is that, and where is that at? Uh, it's coming up pretty soon. I, I, I saw it the other day, and I always go there because they put out a great steak, and it's a great social uh, gathering. I see the home builders are getting ready for their steak fry, and the Lions, Lions Club is getting ready for theirs. Well, then the annual honor flight, that'll be coming up in May, too. Oh, I suppose a, it will a, be. That's a big banquet. Yeah. You, have you been to that yet? Have you gone on that the yet? Honor, yeah, I went years ago. As well, a veteran? Oh, yeah. Well, not as a veteran, no. I was uh, I went as a radio guy and one of the one of the people who would uh, would help veterans. Uh, some of some of the veterans moved all around Washington D.C. at 80 years old and it looked like they were 20 years old. Right. Some of the others were in pretty need bad some shape. assistance. Yeah, yeah, they needed some assistance. Mm -hmm. So I uh, I was honored to go. I was mm -hmm. greatly honored to go. Anyway, Dave, what brings you here today? Well, I I, am, I wanted to uh, announce that we're moving forward with the. Floyd of Rosedale project. And I may have hinted about that in the past. And, um, the, the plan right now is to assemble a public art structure. Uh, it could be anywhere from an abstract art piece that looks somewhat like a pig to something more traditional that kind of looks like the trophy, but mm -hmm. it can't be an exact replica of, of the trophy. And let me, let me step back here. For those listeners that aren't familiar with Floyd of Rosedale, Floyd of Rosedale is arguably the most popular traveling trophy between two Division One football teams in the country, mm -hmm. and it happens to be the the trophy that whoever wins the um, the game between Minnesota University, and Iowa, Minnesota and Iowa, and it and it dates way back to 1934. And I, I always knew that Floyd was from Fort Dodge, but I didn't know the underlying story behind Floyd. Did you know the under? Do you know the underlying story? I do. Do you know I it was do. a racial element? I there was, was a, I believe I know that because you. Told I probably have us. told you that. Yeah, the but last I, time you were here, I, I didn't realize there was a racial element to it until I started discovering. And 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 the reason why we want to recognize and have this public art of Floyd of Rosedale is it brings pride to the community. And so that was the reason. Let's 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 do something about Floyd. Let's right, right. let's let's talk about this story. Well, in in our research, and you can find it on the internet. It's um, it all starts with a running back by the name of Ozzy Simmons, who was an African American running back, mm -hmm. one of the few playing in college football in 1934. And Minnesota comes down to play Iowa, and they beat up on him pretty good, yeah. and it raised a lot of tension, especially between the two governors of the state of Iowa and Minnesota. And these tensions lasted for about, I want to say, well, like a good year until the next game. And and to ease the tension, the governor of Minnesota made a wager to the governor of Iowa. The governor of Minnesota was Floyd B. Olson, and I can't recall who the governor of, Minnesota, of, of Iowa was at the time. But the wager was whoever loses that next year's game um, would have to bring a prized piece of pork, live pork, live livestock, to the winning capital. Well, naturally, Iowa got beat. Minnesota, <laughs> actually, Minnesota, I think, had won like two or three national champions, 
previous to that year. Wait, didn't the Minnesota people want to uh, bring something else that Minnesota is known for, like manure? <laughs> I don't <laughs> <No>. know. <laughs> so anyway, Iowa got beat, and um, uh, Al Loomis was politically Loomis, connected. He right. ran the Rosedale Farm, which was just east of the Aquatic Center, and that supplied the dairy products for the creamery, which was downtown on 3rd Street. Mm -hmm. And uh, he called up the governor of Iowa and he says, I've got this prize pig. He was the, he's the brother to blue boy who appeared the, in the, um, the movie state fair with Will Rogers back right. in 1934. And so they walked the pig up Well, they, they brought the pig up, they, up to Minnesota and they walked it into the Capitol and they named him Floyd after Floyd B. Olson and Rosedale off the Rosedale farm. And, uh, he, Floyd died about two or three years later because everybody thought he was vaccinated. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, then after he died, they created this trophy and that's, that's the, uh, that's the story of, of Floyd. But what, what also is unique about that story is that, um, um, the, that game was broadcast by Ronald Reagan. That's right. He was an Ozzie Simmons fan. He was an I Ozzie Simmons fan here. and, uh, he broadcast for WHO radio, also unique to the story it, later was that Al Loomis married Lily Demita, and Lily Demita right. was a um, was probably the, the most popular mu movie actress in Hollywood from 1926 to 36. She later married, um, whoa, 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 the name escapes me now. Um, oh, look it up. Uh, <laughs> Errol Flynn. Errol Flynn. That's Errol I, Flynn. I was I, I could see his face in my face. Errol Flynn. She married Errol, Errol Flynn, and Errol Flynn died and then later married um uh, al loomis and lily is is buried in oakland cemetery alongside al loomis so there's a lot of uh side stories to this story but what's unique about it is they settled it was a uh, they settled this this racial story with a wager and um and it's a trophy that that's very popular and so what we want to do is uh, uh, assemble a public piece of art that would sit right in the 32nd Street roundabout there off 10th Avenue North. Um, it can't be an exact replica mm -hmm. because we would be in violation of whatever copyright issues there are between the University of Iowa and University of Minnesota. We had a, rel uh, a replica of a pig that puts it in. A yeah, it's going to have. It's going to look like a pig. Hopefully, when we sent out, we've got a um, a Floyd of Rosedale subcommittee, and it's, and it's composed of uh, of about seven or eight different people of, of different backgrounds, one of which is Kevin Twait, who's the athletic director at Iowa Central. And uh, we're looking at, tentatively, we're looking at April 18th as a, a ribbon-cutting date out there at uh, Rosedale Park. We have invited Chuck Long. He's he's going to be in town anyway uh, uh, in Fort Dodge, speaking at Sertoma. And um, we, we'd like to get Dallas Clark um, of University of Iowa legend and also went on to play professionally for the Indiana Colts to be there as well. And so that'll be a ribbon cutting and that'll be what will start the, um, the whole project, the jumpstart the project for this public art. We will be naming this, the, the circle, the roundabout, uh, Floyd, uh, Floyd of Rosedale circle. Oh, is that right? So uh, <laughs> that has not been approved by the council. Yet. Right. I'll have to go through the council. Uh, engineering has pretty much city engineering has pretty much, uh, gave their blessing because we wouldn't be changing any addresses or anything like that. So um, it's just another thing to add, add to our public art and the culture of our community is by putting something out in the middle of the roundabout. All right. I've got my uh, people out there working for us. It was Governor Herring. Governor Herring. Uh, yeah, right. Uh -huh. uh, so uh, you guys get busy out there and uh, find out who uh, Lily Demita married after Al uh, Loomis. That's, uh, yeah. she, she, I, I think she was married to her to him till she died, I think. Oh, okay. Because she's she lived in Fort Dodge, up until and she's buried at Oakland Cemetery. I think. Okay. Yeah. By the way, the Marine Corps Steak Dinner is Sunday, the twenty eighth of this month, April. Excuse me, April uh, at the VFW Post here uh, from four thirty to seven. How many years have you been doing that? Oh, a long time. Really? Dan, you know the great uh, the great Dan Payne used to take that into his heart, and uh, uh, I, I don't really know. That's right. He was uh, a proud Marine too. A very proud Marine. Uh, him and Kurt Olson. Uh, right. Uh, and uh, they would uh, they were very involved. Uh, you'd see them all over town in their red caps and red uh, jackets. And, uh, and, uh, yeah, Dan especially, uh, really took care of, uh, the steak fry. And, uh, 
he uh, I asked him once if the Marine Corps League made any money, and he said no, but it's a good public service, and it's, sure. it's something we think we owe the community, and that's just the way Dan thought, you know, uh-huh. which was uh, which was uh, which was Dan, you know, and I, yeah. I we we appreciated him very much. I agree, many 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 great years. guy, Died yeah. Yes, he did, and took mm-hmm. no nonsense. He was a sweet guy, but he took no nonsense from anybody. I'll tell you, mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't care if he was a short guy. And he laughed at himself. He, he was did. A guy that always never took himself seriously. No, he, was he a didn't. Great guy. And proud to be from Fort Dodge. Proud to serve Fort Dodge. Always in capacity as a always. council member. He was up. He was city manager up in Spencer, right? For I bet twenty years. Oh, long time. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I know people up there, and they still talk about him. They still uh, he has a right. lot of he had a lot of friends up there because uh, mm-hmm. the type of guy he was, and mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, he was a real he was uh, a good old school Ford Dodger. So uh, now we're going to have this Floyd Rosedale uh, thing. Uh, uh, is this going to be tax money that pays for? Or? No. All right, private donations. Private donations. All right, and um, so there'll there'll be a fundraising campaign that'll go on. Uh, cost. Could be anywhere from one hundred twenty-five to two hundred fifty thousand. You know, when it really comes, that much? God. Well, it depends on what it's the makeup of. We don't know. I mean, when you start a public art campaign like this, you send out your RFP, RFPs, and you're, you're at the mercy of those artists that that send their RFPs with their estimates of costs and so forth. So, we're estimating it's one twenty-five to two fifty. It could be more. It could be less. Depends on what material they use. And and um, one thing that, that we have set out from the start is that there will be a maintenance plan. And hopefully, uh, you know, when we have all this public art, there has to be some type of maintenance plan to, to service this. Sure. So we hope that there would be a budget dollar set aside to, to main, maintain at least once a year. And whatever that, whatever the, if it's bronze, we have to deal with that. And so we've, we've, we've taken, as a council, we, or as a city, we've taken a, uh, an inventory of all our public art and we're trying to get it on a maintenance program because that's important to, to uh, keep up what yeah. work we have. God, yeah, that's important. Mm-hmm. That's important for our city. Now, yeah. You know, I'm a big art supporter. And one thing we know of, whatever mm-hmm. the end result, whatever we choose for Lever Rosedale, whatever that whatever that piece of work, we'll get criticism. Just of course. Like, just like the parade on uh, the stick people on Fifth Emmy South and A Street. I like the stick people. Just, just like the uh, – just like the uh, – the, the the elevator, the grain silos. Well, there was a poor lady that came in the, the the courthouse has that river down the side of it, you know. Oh yeah. Uh, and uh, some lady came to the city council one time, and I felt so sorry for her because somebody had used her, and she had this lady asked why that we had that thunderbolt or whatever it is down the side of it, why the city put oh, that yeah. on there, and it cost a million dollars. And you know, Matt was mayor, and he said, well, that's first of all, it's a county, and it didn't cost a million. It cost like 80000 or something. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, but it's just like wild that. rumors all the time. By the way, uh, we're going we're gonna to be flushing steak uh, fries here. The uh, <laughs> Home Builders is uh, Thursday night, the 25th, and I'm sure Mike and Cindy Mulroney will get a hold of us about uh, when the Lions Den is. But um, so, Dave, good to see you, buddy. Yeah, good to see you too, Mike. You know, don't wait so long before coming back, for crying well, out loud. Hopefully more. Oh, so. hopefully you will. All right. Uh, news is coming up next. Then Ann Miller and I Tim Kreinbrink. <laughs> Did I say Miller? Well, he calls me Flaherty all the time. So I do. I do. Yeah. I can never get anything right. <laughs> I, I, I think you're Helen Miller, I guess. I don't know. Why. <laughs> Hi, this is Leslie Segretti. And I'm Tom Kreitler, and you can hear The Money Pit every Saturday afternoon from 4 to 6 on The Voice of Fort Dodge, AM 1400 KVFD, Fort Dodge. Congress will get the Mueller report from Lisa Brady, Fox News. The U.S. Attorney General William Barr just sending a letter to top lawmakers responding to demands to release the full report, reiterating his original plan to release as much as possible. Basically explaining where he is in the process of getting the Mueller report ready to be released to Congress and ultimately to the public. Fox's Mike Emanuel in Washington. He's talking about a painstaking process, basically going through uh, the Mueller report, nearly 400 pages long, to make sure you're not compromising other investigations that may be ongoing, not compromising intelligence matters, sources and methods and that sort of thing. Very careful to to make sure you're not infringing on anyone's rights or giving out sensitive information to those who might want it, might use it to harm us. In his letter, Barr also says there are no plans to submit the report to the White House for a so-called privilege review before Congress gets it. Fox's John Roberts at the White House. Just got off the phone with a member of the president's legal team uh, who told me that uh, they're fully comfortable 
with this decision to uh, leave this all in the hands of the Attorney General William Barr, uh, that Barr has got a uh, long uh, and storied reputation in the Department of Justice and that he is a person who is fully capable of uh, fully understanding the uh, implications of executive privilege and uh, will uh, no doubt make the right decisions in terms of what goes to Congress and uh, what does not go to Congress. Barr says he expects to have the report to Congress by mid-April, if not sooner. Another help wanted sign at the White House. The head of the Small Business Administration, Linda McMahon, set to announce that she'll step down. No word yet on why now. Wall Street rallies. The Dow up 211 points at the closing bell. This is Fox News. The tradition. The suspense. The race. The Kentucky Derby is the pinnacle of horse racing. Rocket Mortgage is giving away 20 VIP trips to witness the Kentucky Derby in person. And one lucky winner will receive $250,000. Use it to purchase your dream home or pay off your mortgage. Enter today at homestretchsweepstakes.com. Oh, got a little stretch they come here at the Derby! The fashion, the mint juleps, the parties. This is your opportunity to experience it all firsthand. Thanks to the Rocket Mortgage Home Stretch Sweepstakes. Enter for your chance to win $250,000 and one of 20 VIP trips to the Kentucky Derby. The Rocket Mortgage Home Stretch Sweepstakes. Enter today at homestretchsweepstakes.com. No purchase necessary. 21 years or older. Ends in April 7, 2019. Homestretchsweepstakes.com. Equal housing lender licensed in all 50 states. And MLS number 3030. President Trump still insisting Republicans will have a plan to replace Obamacare. We're going to have pre-existing conditions and we'll have a much lower deductible. So, and I've been saying it, the Republicans are going to end up being the party of health care. But Democrats and some Republicans are criticizing the president for renewing his fight to replace Obamacare instead of just changing it. Meantime, a federal judge says what's known as association health plans that don't meet the law's coverage rules amount to an end run around Obamacare and are not legal. Those types of plans allow small businesses to combine their forces, essentially, to offer plans outside the Affordable Care Act. A so-called fetal heartbeat bill wins final approval in Georgia, where it's now headed to the governor's desk, and the governor has said he intends to sign it. Abortion rights groups just sued this week in Mississippi over a similar bill there. It bans most abortions once a fetal heartbeat is detected, usually around six weeks into pregnancy. Three days after a public ban on unvaccinated children was announced in Rockland County, New York, hundreds of measles vaccines have been administered. The county's outbreak of measles started last fall when seven international travelers who had the virus visited the area for a Jewish holiday, mainly in ultra-Orthodox communities. There was an interview done um, up in Elmira, New York, where a rabbi made it very clear, and this is not surprising to us, but some simply do not believe it, there are no religious exemptions in the Jewish faith. There are no religious exemptions in the Catholic faith. And county Executive Ed Day says the county's goal is to maximize immunizations and minimize illness. For now, the county's state of emergency remains in effect. Recapping the rally on Wall Street, the Dow up to 11 after the closing bell. Close to 26K, finishing at 25,928. This is Fox News. Your news, your town, your station. KVFD News when it breaks. Good afternoon. I'm Alex Benzigal with the KVFD Afternoon News. The Iowa House has unanimously approved a bill that would increase the penalties for animal mistreatment. The measure approved Thursday by a vote of 96 to 0 moves to the Senate. The bill heightens the criminal penalties for animal abuse and neglect, animal torture and abandonment. Animal welfare advocates have long considered Iowa among the worst states for mistreatment of animals in puppy mills. The state has thousands of dogs and more than 200 large-scale breeding operations. Under the House-backed bill, failure to provide an animal with access to food, drinkable water, sanitary shelter, veterinary care, and grooming could be considered animal abuse, punishable by two years in prison. A second offense would be a felony carrying up to five years in prison. Animal torture, which is intentionally 
causing prolonged suffering or death would be a felony punishable up to five years. Abandoning an animal could carry a 30-day jail sentence, a year in jail if the animal is injured, or two years if it sustains a serious injury. The Fort Dodge Community School District announced on Thursday that Stacy Laird will be the next Fort Dodge Senior High School principal starting with the 2019-2020 school year. Laird currently serves as an assistant principal at FDSH. She replaces Ken Hayes, who accepted a position in the educational leadership program at the University of Northern Iowa. Organizers of a rally a few hours before Saturday's presidential candidate forum in Storm Lake say shrinking market options for farmers must be addressed. As Radio Iowa's O.K. Henderson reports, many of the Democratic candidates who've been traveling through Iowa this year already have focused on consolidation and mergers in the agricultural sector. Last August, New Jersey Senator Cory Booker proposed a moratorium on all corporate mergers. He argues federal antitrust laws aren't being followed and that's creating real problems for family farmers. Booker said during a recent Radio Iowa interview that the result is stagnant wages while corporate profits are at an 80-year high. So these trends continue. The very sort of fundamentals of our democracy are going to begin to unravel, and you're going to see a lot more people calling for more extremism uh, uh, in our country because they don't believe the democratic system or the economic system could work for them anymore. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders made a campaign swing through Iowa earlier this month and denounced concentration in the meatpacking industry as well as the Bayer-Monsanto merger. Neither Sanders nor Booker will be in Storm Lake for the Saturday afternoon candidate forum, but two other U.S. senators who are running for president will be. Senator Amy Klobuchar has been telling Iowa audiences she's been able to bridge the rural-urban divide in Minnesota. Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren has been calling for the breakup of monopolies and this week pledged to appoint federal officials who would reverse anti-competitive mergers like the Bayer-Monsanto merger. Radio Iowa, I'm O.K. Henderson. I'm Alex Benzigal with the KVFD Afternoon News. Have a great day. Here's the AM1400 KVFD weatherology forecast. Chance for scattered rain showers this afternoon, otherwise cloudy skies. Highs level off around 46, northeasterly winds 8 to 15 miles per hour. Chance for scattered rain showers tonight, lows dip down to about 29, cloudy skies expected. Lots of sunshine outside tomorrow, highs level off around 40. From the Weatherology Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Jennifer Wojcicki. Currently, it's 42. Take the worry out of winter with a winter weather advisor on KVFD brought to you by Community Health Center Fort Dodge, offering dental, behavioral health, and general medical assistance for men, women, and children. They're committed to your well-being. Community Health Center, get to know them. And Creative Cakes, making life sweet with espresso, lunch, gourmet cupcakes, and other sweet treats. Creative Cakes in the Crossroads Mall, Fort Dodge. They make life sweet. Listen for the winter weather advisor on the voice of Fort Dodge, AM 1400 KVFD. I'm Jamie Brundage, owner of Historic Bruce Funeral Home. We're a full-service funeral home with an off-site crematory. At Bruce's, we specialize in pre-arrangements and family support before, during, and after the service. We also offer beautiful memorial items to help you remember your loved one forever. Bruce Funeral Home is proud to be by your side every step of the way throughout the funeral process. Historic Bruce Funeral Home, Fort Dodge. Imagining a better bank starts with looking at the savings rates most banks offer and saying, really? Capital One is building something better. You can open a Capital One savings account with one of the nation's best savings rates from anywhere, like here or here or here. One of the nation's best savings rates opened online at a Capital One location or from anywhere. That's banking reimagined. What's in your wallet? For consumers only. Offered by Capital One NA member FDIC. Copyright 2018 Capital One. Michael Devine at AM 1400 KVFD. Listen to this. Making radio great again. Who are you then? Just the fly in the ointment, Hans. The monkey in the wrench. The pain in the ass. If you don't listen to him, you suck. suck. He's sneaky, but he's right. Michael Devine at AM 1400 KVFD. That's right. We'll play a little Godfather music here because uh, the mafia has gotten a hold of Ann Meyer and screwed up her mind. Anyway, uh, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, uh, Ann Meyer is here, Representative Meyer is here, and always glad to see you, even though I called you Miller. I haven't let go of Helen Miller yet, I guess. But <laughs> And our old friend Bill Horn has arrived out of the mists of time. How are you, Bill? I'm just great. Well, uh, I'm delighted to hear that, and I'm great. it's great to see you. Well, I'm. Are you I'm, a bearer I'm, I'm of not, good news? I'm not Tim Cranbrink, so no, you're not. Obviously, no, you're, yeah, he has a better agent. Yeah. So, 
Uh, no, I'm probably not a bearer of good news. I just uh, just wanted a couple minutes to uh, let the audience know. I had a conversation this morning with uh, a friend of mine in China, and he's over there uh, trying to sell American soybeans. Grant Kimberly is his name. Sure, I met Grant. Yeah, and uh, he was with the governor, or Governor Branstad, Ambassador Branstad, uh, the last couple of days. Uh, but the but the message is, this African swine fever is a big deal. It's it's decimating the hogs over there. And as as you and I have talked in the past, Mike, you know they're trying to integrate with big hog buildings over there. They've got about twenty, almost thirty percent of their hogs in these big integrated buildings, yeah. like like we have in Iowa, right? And they want more, but they're struggling with the phytosanitary because surrounding these big buildings, everybody over there has an old a hog in their in their backyard. The you hog, said that the family pig is the way you described yeah, it. Yeah, and the, and the pig uh, has two purposes. He he is the garbage disposal, and then eventually he becomes the meal. Mm -hmm. And then they get another pig. Well, the problem is all of these backyard pigs are sick. They're diseased. They're not taken care of like, like you would in a commercial building. They're not vaccinated and so on and so on. So the diseases from these pigs in these backyards surrounding the big buildings, the disease eventually gets into the building and, and they're having a lot of trouble with that. Well, now with the uh, African swine fever, uh, it's just exploding. So there's good news and there's bad news. The good news is they're going to be buying more pork uh, from Iowa. Yeah, the Chinese uh, to are. replace the, the the dead pigs, and um, th they're also going to be you know buying more more meal because what normally a Chinese hog is about 180 pounds. They're mm -hmm. smaller than our hogs. Mm -hmm. They they just grow them, slaughter them before they get too big, and so now they're going to try to run them up to about 240. 240 to produce more meat okay. to, to replace the meat that's that's dying by grain brink size then yeah yeah <laughs> well, 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 smaller. oh yeah no, no. They, they got a ways to go to get to his yeah. size. <laughs> so so the good news is they're going to be importing more beef at least in the short run uh and they're also going to be uh buying more meal soybean meal from iowa farmers you mean they're going to be importing more pork you said beef or is that, is oh that i'm that sorry did i say beef i yeah. meant pork yeah, I'm a beef guy myself. Yeah, right? well, I'm, <laughs> I've been known to I've been known to chuck down yeah. a few steaks myself. <laughs> so, and a lot of people have probably read. Uh, Representative Meyer and I were just talking about the they, they tried to to ship some of this pork out of China into the U.S. and probably other places we don't know about, and it's diseased pork most likely. And so there's uh, there's a ship that's sitting uh, uh, full of pork. Uh, in a U.S. harbor in New and, Jersey, yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we've had the story. Yeah, and uh, they don't know what to do with it. Now, there's more bad news. Uh, they just discovered that if you go to China and you eat pork, the swine, uh, the African swine fever, uh, is in your stool for four days. Four days. So you could travel anywhere in the world after you've eaten Chinese pork and spread the disease. Uh, so it's they, gonna catch up with us sooner or later. They then. just discovered it, this uh, about a week ago and it's, it's not even in the press yet, but it, this could be a global catastrophe for the hog industry, uh, which is bad for Iowa because we produce the, the, uh, the meal, soybean meal and yeah, corn yeah. for the pigs. So anyway, hopefully, you know, they'll, it, it won't happen, but, um, our government is really concerned about it, and you know, something could happen here. You know, uh, I don't know if I, I think it was Steve Peterson, the Farm Bureau, first told us the story, and then uh, I had Greg Horry here a couple of times, of course, and I texted back and forth with those guys. And of course, you know me; I'm a suspicious type anyway. I'm the suspicious type, and I, and uh, the way this pork was packaged, and we talked about it at the pork producer. I didn't talk about it, but I was at the pork producers' dinner here out at Willow Ridge a while ago. And uh, we had a conversation about it, and the speakers uh, talked about it a little bit. And this pork was embedded with other things. Yes, I mean, it was, hidden. Uh, it was hidden, intentionally hidden. It was an ingenious, ingeniously hidden. And if we hadn't had, and I didn't know this existed, pork smelling dogs, uh, uh, really? that, that that food would already be in our. Mike, our, that, our, that's natural for dogs. dogs. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> all dogs can smell all pork. Dog. <laughs> but, <clears throat> uh, okay. But yes, yes. <clears throat> okay. But can they smell it, for God's sakes, when it's in for a 
detergent and yeah. a lot of other things. Well, there's two things. First of all, China does not export pork. They import pork. Mm -hmm. And so Chinese pork shows up and it's not on the manifest. Right. Other stuff in the ship is on the manifest, but not the pork. So, I mean, it's just. Well, Steve and I were talking about the Chinese will always act in their interest in the extremists. Yes. I mean, uh, they yes. don't even try to play fair. And the United States seems to try at least try to play fair every yeah. now and then. Yeah. The point being, it does not benefit China to have African swine fever in China, but not in the United States. Yes. If, if they can harm our country in this way, uh, they will. Of course, now, you know, Steve and Greg and a couple other guys said, oh, no, we don't think that's true. But I, I, I'm still not convinced that that well, ex isn't exactly the reason this uh, this pork showed up on our shores. You need to talk to Dr. Armbrick in Rockwell City. I will. As I said, he serves on a national animal disease uh, committee. Mm -hmm. It's a big deal. Mm -hmm. Most people around here don't know it, but he's in Washington a lot making the rules for, for meat. So anyway, I've taken up enough time. The important stuff is coming here now. <laughs> that was pretty important. That, that was pretty important. Oh, he's, he, he's out there in the desert. I'll tell you, he's just chilled out there. Oh yeah. He's got this, he's got this great girlfriend. Now we never see him anymore, but I, you know, I'm glad you, you look well, Bill and great to see you. Your, your right. guys' life mirrors each other. Then. Oh, yeah. What's that? I said your guys' life kind of mirrors each other. How so? oh, great, well, girlfriend, great girlfriend. Great yeah, girlfriend. Yeah, well, I'm trying to buy a mobile home so I can drive it down to uh, uh, Arizona. Next All winter. except you're just not as tanned as he is. I am not I'm as not. tanned. and uh, yeah, There's a lot of things that Bill has I don't have. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm good where I am. Our guests are, I keep calling her Representative Miller here today. I can't uh, let go of Helen Miller, I, I guess. And uh, could be worse, could be calling her Senator Crime. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, if you have a question for Representative Meyer or Senator Crime, they are in the studio, obviously. So, 515 955 1400. That's 515 955 1400. And we're uh, on, uh, oh, YouTube. we're fired up. We're fired up. Usually takes a sexton here to get it going. Yeah, we he's a He's out. mystery guest. No, I know. <laughs> AM fourteen hundred. Good afternoon. You're on the air with uh, Senator Cranbrook, Representative Marr. All righty, I'll get her going here. I have a question about the new drunk driving bill that they just signed. New drunk driving bill that was just signed. Yes. Now it's uh, fifteen years in prison, and you're a convicted felon if you get caught for your third OWI. And yeah. first of all, I want to say that I'm not condoning drunk driving. I think that's very bad. But you yeah. do, but you do have two no, uh, OWIs now, or what? Well, thirty years ago, when I was a kid, yeah. I was young and dumb. Yeah, I have two OWIs on my record. Oh, yeah. And they, since at that time, they have passed laws where they uh, never go off your record ever. Well, I think so now, if I have two beers at home, and I'm going point oh eight, which I like again, I'm not condoning drunk driving. I mean, people make mistakes, but I'm going to prison for 15 years and I'm a convicted felon and you'll pull me away from my family. I mean, yeah, I understand the law where you're trying to uh, persecute people that are blatantly uh, rejecting the law. But in the same token, you should have some respect for people that made mistakes in their past, you know, where after 20 years, they should go off your record. Well, I, I, I please respond, and Senator Kramer. I'm not sure how how that is going to go as far as you know years past. Um, and I, it, it's probably there, good. It's there probably is, there is no exception. It's probably good that uh, you're calling because we haven't seen it in the Senate yet. And I guess my thought is that I think I've heard a little bit of rumbling about it, and I think they're worried about habitual offenders. And if 20 years goes by before your third offense, I would imagine you're probably not a habitual offender. So that would be something that maybe uh, when it comes to the Senate, if it comes through the House first, which it sounds like they might have might have uh, passed it out of the House, we could maybe look at an amendment of sup some type that after so many years you get a clean slate. And then habitual offender to me means that you are doing it constantly within a short period of time. I guess that's how I would probably define that. And in the Senate, I'll keep my eyes open for that. Thanks for thanks for that call. It's a good heads up. 
Yeah, thank you, sir. A great question to start off the session. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. This is AM 1400 KVFD, The Voice for Dutch. I got pulled over for drunk driving once when I hadn't had a drink. And I thought to myself, where am I in life where people think I'm drunk and I'm straight sober? <laughs> How does this work? Look at that guy. He's drunk. Uh, no, I'm not really. <laughs> uh, you probably get accused of that all I, the time. Well, not all the time, but it happens every now and then. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, yeah, 515-955-1400 uh, uh, if you have a question or comment for Representative Meyer or Senator uh, Crimebrick. Did I say that? I said Meyer, right? Yep, now. you all did right. the right thing. I don't know why I got this Miller thing in my head today. I, I, I've never said that before, but uh, I don't know. It happens every now and then. So how was your wig down uh, in Des Moines there, Representative Meyer? I'm going to pull up your newsletter right mm. here. The week was good. No, yeah. um, We passed some good bills uh, this week. Yesterday, um, I'm, I had a lot of people contact me bef before session and during session about animal cruelty. Um, and we did pass, uh, Representative Kaufman ran the bill to increase um, penalties for people who are intentionally cruel to animals. Uh, and this is, and, and Representative Sexton brought up a good point uh, prior to running the bill. He said, you know, who is going to determine if um, my farm dog is living outside in the winter uh, in the in the barn with, you know, just a blanket, if that's cruel when someone else is, you know, keeping it in the house with a nice comfy dog bed, am I going to be convicted of this? And it's, it's not that it's for obvious torture and cruelty. And people have seen that. And I think one of the stories that came out was the, um, muzzle around the the tape around the muzzle that, that, that was pretty well, terrible it's either tape or uh, i think some use bungee cords actually yeah. that's disgusting Ugh, it was uh, yeah i'm holding that thought let's go to the phones am 1400 kbfd good afternoon you're on the air yes this is my baroni i thought i saw an article in the paper in the last 10 days about limiting property tax increases to two percent is that something i imagined or is that under consideration? Um, I, I think there's something out there with property tax. Uh, it hasn't come in front of the, uh, on the floor yet, in the Senate anyway, and it doesn't look like uh, Representative no. Meyer's kind of shaking her head that it hasn't come up there yet either. Uh, but uh, if if it's something you've read in the last 10 days, then it's probably still a live round, which means that it must have gone through a committee and it's eligible you know, to be addressed on the floor. But I'd have to, I guess I'd have to look. You don't have a study bill number or anything, do you? Mike? You, Mike, you don't yeah. have, do you have a, do you have a number or anything that was attached to that? Or are you just going from memory? Okay. I was, it sounded real good since in Fort Dodge and Webster County, our assessments, uh, our property taxes, in mine in particular, go up 25%. All right. I have I have a question unrelated to what we're talking about here, Mike. Okay. When's the Lions Club steak fry? May sixteenth. All right, May sixteenth. So it's coming up. All right, good. Where's the best best steak fry in Fort Dodge? Oh, yes, wait. it is. All right. Um, <laughs> make sure you stop by my office. I'll buy a couple tickets. I'll, I'll, I'll get them to you. All right. Thanks. Hey, thank you, Mike. Thank you. All right. Bye. All right. AM fourteen hundred KBFD. The Voice Fort Dodge. Uh, uh, let's get back to the, uh, the, uh, animal, animal abuse cruelty. thing, because this always makes pork producers nervous because we do slaughter animals here. Well, I think there are some exceptions. Yeah. Well, it, no, it's specific language that, um, excludes farm animals. Okay. It is, it is for companion pets. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, well, that, well, that's good then. And all of, we have a large amount of farmers in the house, many, many farmers, and it was unanim unanimously supported. I should call Zumba down there. You know, he's he offered uh, when we were uh, last summer when we were out at uh, the park for your uh, for the Republican Party thing. Zumba said, if you need to know anything about what's happening with agriculture, give me a call. Yeah, he's a good. He'd be a good resource there. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, uh, Representative Meyer, I, I'm going to get over. Don't worry, I'm going to get over to Senator Kreinberg because I got his new letter newsletter here too. Uh, uh, well, I guess we're going to get some calls today, and that's even better. So, AM 1400, KVFD, The Voice of Dodge. Good afternoon. You're on the air. Hey, how are we doing today? Real good, man. Good. Hey, um, on this uh, animal cruelty thing and, and the uh, puppy mill 
and I hate to call them all puppy mills because there's a lot of people out there that uh, raise raise pets like that for uh, for sale and do a, a really good job. But I I can't come up with a different term at this at this minute. But my question is this: Do they have uh, do, is there any kind of a program that says that these guys have to be inspected by some, like a state or county or something inspector that goes around and checks these uh, facilities out for that kind of thing? Yes, they are supposed to be inspected by IDOLs. Right. Well, tell them what IDOL is. Uh, Iowa Department of Agriculture. Right. I, I think what, what um, you're talking about is... Uh, um, licensed breeders, probably, right? That that they breed um, dogs and companion ap animals for uh, sale, um, and yes, they are they are uh, assigned to a uh, a group kind of like DHS is for human um, people. So the thing is that we've got some that are puppy mills, which you're correct. There are some, and I think that puppy mills are different because. Uh, some of them are not registered. So the right. different the difference is licensed breeders versus unlicensed, which I think when you get to the unlicensed, when we start talking about some of them that, you know, if there's no record that they're that they're doing it, it's hard to check up on them. And I think that's where we're getting some of this some of the, some of the problems that we're looking at today. You know, you haven't you you haven't called in a long time. The last time you called, you told me I had my nose and head so far up the mayor's whatever I couldn't see daylight. I said that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> I think you did. Yes, you did. <laughs> I don't. I don't think you know who you're talking. Well, to. And maybe it was another guy with your voice and looks like you. Then. <laughs> Maybe, maybe it was me, man. Uh, maybe it was I would, I would not forget if I said that. <laughs> you mean it was? You mean what you actually said was worse? I, mean, <laughs> I don't know. Could have been. I don't know. <laughs> hey, thanks for calling. Yeah, uh, you bet. All thanks. right, AM fourteen hundred KVFD, the voice of Fort Dodge. So, does Ann still have a problem with democracy over here? You know, you know, I'm going to give her grief on that judge's vote. <laughs> <laughs> you prefer a monarchy, okay? <laughs> and Myers in favor of a monarchy. No, no, no. I think, I think I'm sick next week. <laughs> are you? <laughs> oh, are you addressing it next week in the in the house? No, I mean. Um... No, she, oh. she didn't want to come Next on this Friday. show. Oh, really? Uh, no, no, no. Oh, I thought maybe you'd say you felt like you had the flu coming on right now. <laughs> no, no, I'm, no that's what? Sexton. Yeah. <laughs> Sexton. Yeah. My, Mike, I, I know that we have a fundamental difference on this, but again, I'm just um, bringing the views of my constituents down to Des Moines. Well, that's you know, what I'm here for. I know. And Jerry Bain just burned the house down last Saturday, didn't he? At Eggs and Issues. I mean, that was terrific. I mean, uh, I people have been talking about it here all week. Well, uh, Jerry, you know, Jerry is a pretty matter of fact guy. He either, is a very matter of fact. Um, he doesn't usually beat around the bush. No, and, he doesn't. And he usually has a good way of explaining things. That's why actually he's actually the president pro temp of, of the, uh, the Senate, which is one step up from uh, Senate uh, House Mano Majority Assistant Majority Leader, so um, you know he's holds a pretty good spot there in the Senate, and uh, he's well respected. And you know he 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 is well versed and and read on the issues, and and uh, you know he even voted for the uh, the solar um, fee, oh, uh, he? and he uses solar. Yeah. So I mean, he's actually a solar provider. Yeah, he's a Republican. AM 1400 KVFT, the voice for Dodge. Good afternoon. You're on the air. Yeah, I'd like to see the judges stay like they are because they are trying to put politics into selecting the the, the judges. Is your name you Jim Meyer? You can't sit there and say <laughs> that the representatives that are voted in are going to represent the people because you've got a Republican Party in there and it's controlled by the religious right. And they control that party. Seventy percent of the people in the state have no trouble with abortion, but yet you've got the religious right. So you're not going to be honest by them picking judges. You're going to end up having a deal like the Supreme Court, where it's so political, it's, it's terrible. I I think you have to look at a couple issues. First of all, really, where the abortion issue needs to go is to 
the 70% that are in favor of it and let them vote on it. So we should have done a constitutional amendment on it and then had it go to a vote. So if you're correct and 70% of the people in Iowa want to keep it legal, then we will know that. But you're just throwing 70% out there. You don't know that fact. Um, I, I don't know that fact. So if I don't know it, and I mean, I'm sure nobody else does either. And so we should let it go to the to the people for that vote. We shouldn't have 1,500 members of the Bar Association have 60% of the say in who in in who is on the on on our courts. That's what it is. Those 1,500 representatives from the Bar Association aren't accountable to anybody. They don't. They aren't voted in by by their constituents. So if you want to be you know, you, if you really want the truth of the matter is, is that we are accountable to you. And if you don't like the job we're doing, then get us out. If we don't like the job that the Bar Association is, is doing, we, we have no recourse. We can't vote them out. They're responsible for putting 60% of the people on our court system. And 70%, and this is a fact, 70% of the Bar Association is Democrat. And Nine, about 90% of the funds that are given from the Bar Association go to Democrat um, people that are elected. So if you're telling me it isn't political now, then I think we, I think we just have a disagreement and we're just going to have to remain. It, it is political. It, and I don't it is right now. It is right now. You're a Republican and they have bought and paid for you to be in there and you're <laughs> going to do the bidding of these religious right uh, organizations trying to get off good judges. So you don't you like... Know, we, don't have, we don't have, like, the Supreme Court where they're voting 5-4 all the time. So... You, that is political. So... We don't have that in Iowa. So and let I think me... we ought to keep it that way. We don't need politics in our judges. I hate to tell you this, but it's already there. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. It's so let me, let me see if I understand your position. You don't like Christianity, and you don't like democracy. What is I, your? I don't have no trouble with Christianity. I just don't want it shoved down my throat. I don't want somebody else's religion being shoved down my throat. Can we send some Jews if, over if and they'll shove that down your throat? Hey, if you, well, the Republican will pass a bill on there. Hey, if you're not a Baptist, you can't run for office in the Republican Party. You're the goofy like that. You're the guy who told me I had my nose so far up the mayor's. You're the guy. Well, I got aren't... It up now, and, now I got it up uh, there, Kbrink. You you are the guy. That's what I. That, thought. Hey, that's my email address. Is Kbrink? It's Kreinbrink. Is actually my name. Actually my name. <laughs> all well, right. I'm, all I'm saying is, the Republicans don't go down there and represent the majority of the people. They go down there and represent. A part of their party. Can I interrupt you, do, sir? They do it every year by just the laws they keep bringing up, just off the wall crap. All right, all right, calm down, calm down. Representative Meyer wants to tell you something, sir. Um, I'm a Republican, and I am actually representing what my constituents say in Fort Dodge. And I, at this, unless there are some major changes, I'm not supporting that legislation. So, as a Republican, I do feel like I am representing everyone in town, not just. Republican or the religious right. So, on, well, so, I admire you for that. So on the district court level, the only change is, is that instead of the senior judge being in there, which is currently Judge Wilkie on our in our district here, the Supreme Court will elect one person to be the to the to be on that committee for the district judges. It's the only change. So you wouldn't be in favor you're of the Supreme Court. So, so the only change in the district judge level is having the Supreme Court pick one person that goes on to that instead of the instead of the senior judge. I mean, that's the only change on the district level. Let me take a wild shot here. You're a Democrat, right? I'm an independent. Oh, come on, man! I've, I've voted for Republicans. I voted for Democrats. But you don't. And, uh, but you don't really like the Republicans that well, do you? Not the last two years. They've just gone off the. I don't know where they've gone to. There used to be a lot of moderates in that party. Where Where were they? You no, know, even even Grassley used to be a moderate. He's just gone off the wall. <laughs> really? Well, uh, would you, what would you have us do with judges? Then get them crowns and robes and have them. Uh, 
Uh, I think they're doing a fantastic job. How so? When you've got Republicans that are discriminating against people. What people? And, and, uh, you know, and uh, our judges overrule them because they are discriminating. If you don't have that, what do you got? Give me an example of people are being discriminated against by judges or Republicans or whoever you're talking about. Okay, uh, let's just talk about uh, gay marriage. All right. What are you, gay? Why, why, why should a gay be discriminated against for marriage? Why should a gay be discriminated against? What, yeah, what? You, you were always raised in heck with that farm deal or whatever. Yeah. Uh, Frank. <laughs> so what, so, but if you're a human being, what difference does it make if they get married or not? I mean, why are you discriminating against just a certain group? Right. I want to marry my horse. That's, that's what the judges stop. <laughs> they stop the Republicans from discriminating against that. They discriminate against women's rights. I mean, they just. What women's rights did they discriminate against? Abortion and all that other stuff. Abortion's legal. They're trying to make it not. Oh, well, all right. Well, listen, thank you for your call. Yep. All right. Yeah. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to go to the news. This is AM fourteen hundred KVMD. <laughs> Is online at yourfortdodge.com on Twitter at jmike1400. Yeah, it's 337. I'm all shook up. The Elvis and Johnny show returns to Fort Frenzy, March 29th, 7 p.m. Come on out as we walk the line and celebrate the legacy of these two legendary icons. Tickets are now available. Don't be cruel. I'll see you soon. Your news, your town, your station. KVFD News when it breaks. Good afternoon, I'm Alex Benzegal with the KVFD Afternoon News. The Iowa House has unanimously approved a bill that would increase the penalties for animal mistreatment. The measure approved Thursday by a vote of 96-0 to zero moves to the Senate. The bill heightens the criminal penalties for animal abuse and neglect, animal torture and abandonment. Animal welfare advocates have long considered Iowa among the worst states for mistreatment of animals in puppy mills. The state has thousands of dogs and more than 200 large-scale breeding operations. Under the House-backed bill, failure to provide an animal with access to food, drinkable water, sanitary shelter, veterinary care, and grooming could be considered animal abuse, punishable by two years in prison. A second offense would be a felony carrying up to five years in prison. Animal torture, which is intentionally causing prolonged suffering or death, would be a felony punishable up to five years. Abandoning an animal could carry a 30-day jail sentence, a year in jail if the animal is injured, or two years if it sustains a serious injury. The Fort Dodge Community School District announced on Thursday that Stacy Laird will be the next Fort Dodge Senior High School principal starting with the 2019-2020 school year. Laird currently serves as an assistant principal at FDSH. She replaces Ken Hayes, who accepted a position in the educational leadership program at the University of Northern Iowa. Organizers of a rally a few hours before Saturday's presidential candidate forum in Storm Lake say shrinking market options for farmers must be addressed. As Radio Iowa's O.K. Henderson reports, many of the Democratic candidates who've been traveling through Iowa this year already have focused on consolidation and mergers in the agricultural sector. Last August, New Jersey Senator Cory Booker proposed a moratorium on all corporate mergers. He argues federal antitrust laws aren't being followed and that's creating real problems for family farmers. Booker said during a recent Radio Iowa interview that the result is stagnant wages while corporate profits are at an 80-year high. So these trends continue. The very sort of fundamentals of our democracy are going to begin to unravel. And you're going to see a lot more people calling for more extremism uh, uh, in our country because they don't believe the democratic system or the economic system can work for them anymore. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders made a campaign swing through Iowa earlier this month and denounced concentration in the meatpacking industry as well as the Bayer-Monsanto merger. Neither Sanders nor Booker will be in Storm Lake for the Saturday afternoon candidate forum, but two other U.S. senators who are running for president will be. Senator Amy Klobuchar has been telling Iowa audiences she's been able to bridge the rural-urban divide in Minnesota. Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren has been calling for the breakup of monopolies and this week pledged to appoint federal officials who would reverse anti-competitive mergers like the Bayer-Monsanto merger. Radio Iowa, I'm O.K. Henderson. I'm Alex Benzegal with the KVFD Afternoon News. Have a great day. Here's the AM1400 KVFD weatherology forecast. Chance for scattered rain showers this afternoon, otherwise cloudy skies. Highs level off around 46, northeasterly winds 8 to 15 miles per hour. Chance for scattered rain showers tonight, lows dip down to about 29, cloudy skies expected. Lots of sunshine outside tomorrow, highs level off around 40. 
From the Weatherology Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Jennifer Wojcicki. Currently, it's 42. Here's a look at how the markets close today. May corn down 17 and a half to close at 356 and a half. July down 17 and a half at 366 and a quarter. September corn down 16 at 375. December down 13 and a half at 384 and three quarters. May soybeans down five and a quarter at 884 and a quarter. July down five and a quarter at 897 and three quarters. August down a nickel at 904 and November down four and three quarters at 919. May wheat down six and three quarters at four fifty seven and three quarters. Soybean meal unchanged at three oh six fifty. April live cattle down eighty two at one twenty five seventy. June down sixty two at one nineteen. April feeders down seventy cents at one forty five and a quarter. May down ninety at one forty eight seventy seven. April lean hogs down to one fifty at seventy seven thirty seven. May down two thirty five at eighty one thirty two. From the farm desk, I'm Dwayne Murley. Does fermented tea have extra health benefits? Hi, I'm Julie Harker with Healthy Living on Brownfield. Kombucha is a fermented tea that some claim has special health benefits from helping with digestion and sleep and immunity. The scientific community does not support most of the health claims. Kombucha starts with green or black tea with bacteria, sugar, and yeast added. After a week or two, it's fermented. And that means it has probiotics, like other fermented foods. Probiotics are those good bacteria that promote good gut health. Kombucha tea can also be a good source of B vitamins, antioxidants, and trace minerals. The safest is pasteurized. Raw and homemade versions of kombucha have the highest risk of causing foodborne illness. The University of Wisconsin recommends if you are making your kombucha, sanitation is critically important. All equipment needs to be sterile. They recommend using black or green tea as the base instead of herbal teas. After fermenting for 7 to 10 days at room temperature and not in the sun or outside, kombucha needs to be filtered into clean containers and refrigerated. The result is a fizzy, sweet, and sour drink. The Food and Drug Administration says kombucha is safe when properly prepared. You can buy it pre-made in the health section of grocery stores. I'm Julie Harker with Healthy Living on Brownfield. Many medicines used to treat colds and flu contain acetaminophen, a pain reliever and fever reducer found in hundreds of over-the-counter and prescription medicines. But taking too much or more than one medication containing acetaminophen per day can damage your liver. So always read the label and don't take acetaminophen if you drink three or more alcoholic drinks every day. To learn more, visit fda.gov slash OTC pain info. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Food and Drug Administration. Did you know that the CDC recommends up to six vaccines, even for healthy adults? Or that vaccines are part of a healthy lifestyle, just like eating well and exercising? Or that choosing not to get vaccinated may put your health at risk? There's a lot to know when it comes to vaccines. Get the facts by visiting vaccinesandyou.com and talk to your doctor about which vaccines may be right for you. When it comes to your health, it pays to get the facts. Visit vaccinesandyou.com for more information. A public service. Michael Devine at AM 1400 KVFD. Listen to this. Making radio great again. Who are you then? Just the fly in the ointment, Hans. The monkey in the wrench. The pain in the ass. Michael Devine, the mayor of Manville. It's a fancy title for a part time job. <laughs> Michael Devine at AM 1400 KVFD. Well, we just uh, had a great call uh, in the last half hour. Apparently, we need to keep the judge uh, selection process in place so the rest of us don't discriminate because we're a bunch of morons, I guess. <laughs> Especially you Republicans, even though he doesn't mind Republicans, but you're particularly, I didn't, I didn't, wow, that was a great call. That was a great call. Uh, if you have a question or comment for uh, Representative Ann Meyer or uh, Senator Tim Sexton, 515-955-1400. It, it's really too bad. Senator that, Tim Sexton? That I, yeah, it's, it's really too bad that Scrappy isn't here today. You know, he'd have been jumping up and down. <laughs> Good afternoon. You're on the air at AM 1400. Yes. Um, well, first of all, I want to say I agree with Tim on the judges, that they ought to change that. And then I had a question um, on that, on the female uh, mutilation or whatever circumcision. Did oh. they ever, how did that bill ever go? It, it made it through the uh, Senate. 
So I, I would assume it's on its way over to the house. Yep. So it's going over to the house. So we can count on your vote. It, it, it's one. it's to stop. I can't hardly hear you. It, you're kind of do you have your Do you have your radio on? It's kind of got feedback here. But it's still it's still on. Then that bill is. Yes, it, it made it through the Senate. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, that was what I wanted to know. Thank and, you. And it wasn't that it made it legal. It's that it made it illegal. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think she did have a radio and there's feedback coming yep. down the line there. I'm pretty sure. Anyway, if you have a question or a comment, yeah, we got a lot of calls this afternoon. That's great. That's uh, that's terrific. Uh, we really want to, I know the representatives would rather hear your concerns rather than talk to me, but uh, I, that's just, I just assume they have no taste, but uh, that's just the way they are. So they'd much rather respond to your questions and, uh, and concerns than uh, than anything else. One, so one, one of the bills that we passed, we talked a little bit off the air that uh, it's one of four actually uh, kind of a welfare reform bill. Mm -hmm. I think that's where we're concentrating quite a bit on this this year. Go ahead and take the call. All right. This is AM 1400 KVFD. You're on the air. Hello. Uh, I was just watching. Was there a caller talking? You're, you're going to have to speak more directly into the receiver, sir. Can't hear you. Was there a previous caller talking about uh, drunk driving law? Yeah. Um, now, now, is that for everybody else or, you know, everyone? Or, you know, is, is some people exempt from that? Because it seems like a lot of uh, wealthy people in the state, it kind of gets swept under the rug, you know. <laughs> no, that's for everybody. If you have three OWIs. And really, oh. in this day and age, there's no reason for... Um, drunk driving oh, we have not. so many uh, alternatives like uber and you know taxi cabs and walking and staying home and drinking <laughs> now you have to remember i think what you're asking is some of them some if there are people that you feel don't get to an owi because they have more money and can buy their way through it it has to be it has to be three proven owis doesn't it I yes mean, so i mean yeah, i see i see where you're going and uh and where you're going with it, it has to be three actually convicted OWIs. Okay. I can't tell you how many times I've been named the designated driver. I never had any fun, really, but everybody else seemed to. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, I know what you're talking about. I, was, I, I didn't I didn't like get all of that. I wanted to I, I wanted to clarify that up. So yep, very good. Thanks nice question. Thank you, sir. AM 1400 KVFD, The Voice for Dodge. One thing, we're getting mostly good questions yeah. there. So getting back to the... Um, some of the things that the Republican how or Senate anyway is is doing and has passed. Um, one one of the main welfare reform bills requires um, people that are not eligible for waivers. So a waiver is something that if you're on um, Medicaid, you can apply for a waiver if you just cannot work. Uh, one of the we th we thought we were pretty generous. We we're pretty gen general or not general, but generous in giving you um, the opportunity to get waivers. One of them actually would be allowed if you had a young child and until that child was in kindergarten before your waiver would run out. Right now, there's 180, I think, thousand people that are, are on welfare, um, um, Medicaid. Uh, 70 of them right now do not qualify for a waiver, meaning that they could work. So 70,000 I ones uh, do not qualify for a waiver. So what the bill is that we passed now that's on the way over to the house is that if you are one of those 70,000 that do not qualify for a waiver, you would need to either volunteer 20 hours a week or you would have to work 20 hours a week. Uh, volunteer means you don't get paid, but wherever you go, whether it's a nursing home or the food bank or whatever, who's ever responsible there would sign your form. Uh, but if you're working, then you'd actually get paid for those hours that you're working. Um, and uh, and so then you would continue to be eligible for uh, the benefits as as well as you're working or volunteering. Um, so now we had did we did pass that. That's one of the major parts of well felt welfare reform. And now that bill will be going over to the house for them to either accept it like it is or they will amend it and or, or they'll just not run it. So that's kind of where that's at currently. Uh, we're running out of a little time here. So, uh, or we'll get down to just a little time, I should say. I, I do want to ask you about the uh, traffic camera bill. I know Bemrick and the rest of the city guys have been 
all over you, uh, draped all over you about this because they want to keep that money for uh, public safety. No, they course. haven't. They basically haven't talked to me before the bill came up again in the Senate. Um, after I did vote, um, they some of them, few of them, texted me and said thanks. But you know, I had no contact. How did you before. vote? Now I voted to keep them. You voted to keep the cameras. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yep. I, you know, my and I said in my newsletter, which you probably have read there. Is, yeah, it's right here. You know, if people in Fort Dodge want them, then they should let their city council know. And and I feel their city council should be responsible for making that decision for the city of Fort mm -hmm. Dodge. If they're concerned about it um, ruining our shopping, that neighboring communities won't come here anymore to shop, then, then that should be the concern of our city council. Um, you know, I, in my letter is if you, if you want my letter, of course you can sign up for it, but I made the, the, uh, um, comment that I feel that everyone should get a mulligan mm -hmm. on the first ticket and say, you know what, we are controlled by camera speeding tickets. And so remember that the next time you come to town, because you would have gotten one this time, but you're going to give you a mulligan this time. And also they should be able to get those bills out within seven days. So some people are incurring two or three of those when they come into yeah. town because they're not aware of it. And pretty soon they got $200 worth of tickets and it really sours. You know, I don't like it either when I get a ticket from a speeding camera, but you know, that's the way it is. And, you know, and, and they were up front with me right away. I've said this for the last three years, they told me it's a revenue source for the, for the town of it's Fort Dodge. Regressive and tax. It, well, Senator. you know what? It's it, a tax. It, it, it is, a, is a way for us to put two or three more officers on the streets. And, you know, it's 10 miles an hour over. Kind of sneaky. You know, way it's 10 to. miles an hour they over. Hit 11 sneaky. miles. You know, I mean, if you're going 45 and a 35, yeah. if a deer comes out in front of you, a kid comes out in front of you, and you're not paying attention because there's a white, vehicle at the bottom of the hill that's timing you you're not going to see that kid either okay so just slow down you know i guess is what i would say well we have, we have speed cameras between uh 15th street and uh the veterans bridge they're there for one reason well, believe me i have the statistics there has not been one fatality or even serious injury to anybody in that floor but for then block. we need to talk to our city council and that's say right. don't put one there i do talk to them all the time they uh, they tell me it's for. But if they're not getting pressure from the voters, then if, other than Mike Devine, then we need more people to talk to. I them just about feel it. like I'm the only one right in the whole town. Sometimes. You are. You know, I know. I, I know that. Some people think far right. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> you're on the air. Good afternoon. You're on the air with our representatives. Hello. Yeah, you said it again. There, it's just for generating revenue. There's no public safety involved in this. Um. You know, I slow, I slow down. Revenue and uh, you know some of the some of the areas in town where they put them, the speed limits are lower than they should be. Also, but what I have to say to you is that they didn't try to tell me like they did Brad Zahn that it's for safety purposes only. The people in when I met with our leaders, elected officials of Fort Dodge, they did not try to tell me that. They told me it generates enough revenue to put three new police officers on the street. And I respect them for telling me that because a lot of other elected officials are telling their people that it's only about safety. And that's not true. Those are uh, officials that don't have talk radio shows in their town. Cause I went around with Matt Bremerick and uh, some of the other council people for uh, several months to get them off that public safety thing. And they finally came. I, I've always been honest with that here. Yeah. I mean, you know that Mike, no, I've I, never, I know that. I've I know never that. flipped on that. I know that. I know. Thanks that. for the call. That was a great uh, thank you. Thank you for the call. What do you think about speed parent cameras there, Miss Ann? Um, I also support the local control of that. If you, <clears throat> you know, I think that, People have asked for East. That could I think be. a lot of people get hammered. Well, right yeah, that's because their lab workers coming down and coming home, and uh, that's a that's kind of sneaky. But anyway, AM fourteen hundred KVFD. Good afternoon. You're on the air. Yeah, say we have the technology now to track vehicles with GPS. Yeah. So, are we looking at down the road? Uh, they track the GPS for speeding in different areas. A computer will pick out anybody that speeds, and they'll send them a ticket. Does it? GPS tells which vehicle, and you know how, how big is Big That's Brother? That's interesting. Well, Big Brother is pretty big now because when you're on Facebook and you look at something, 
in an advertisement within 30 seconds, another thing on sale shows up right there. They know exactly what you're looking for. I mean, it's getting to the point where, and, and I hope it doesn't get to that point with our cars. Um, but when you get your car stolen and you can do a GPS to find it, it's pretty convenient. So at some point we have to find a balance here and what is infringing on I your mean, if you're personal price. cameras for revenue purposes, why wouldn't you be for the GPS tracking people's speed with that and giving everybody a ticket? They right. wouldn't lose anybody that way. Right. Well, I think we'd have more revenue than we knew what to do with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what? It's okay one way, but, you know, when you start getting a little bit more yeah, in people's that's, lives. That's a great point. You know, uh, I, I, I owe you an apology. Yeah, I, I asked if you were the guy who told me I had my head up the mirrors, you know what, uh, a while ago. You are not the guy. Surprisingly enough and coincidentally, he called right after you did. He's the gay, uh, he's the gay marriage uh, guy, uh, advocate. Uh, he's the one who told me I had my head so far. But I, 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 but I agree with them speed cameras. Where, where's the limit? I mean, they got the GPS. They, got, they just put in new technology downtown for checking license plates. Right. Well, I mean, it's coming. Well, I know. We'll we'll have Bemrick break it into the house uh, with some armed police yeah. officers taking our stuff here pretty soon. I mean, well, the, only, the only ones that can stop that stuff is the ones we elect down in that house down in Des Moines. Yeah, but you keep looking if at. They won't back up the people. Then we're screwed. But you got to still look at even you know body cameras on police officers. You know, it's to the point now where we need to have body cameras to prove a police officer isn't guilty of something. A listener. I mean, this whole thing. It, like you said, is getting to the point where there's going to be a lot of issues with rights of of people that, you know, we're going to have to make a lot of decisions on in the future. But you, they always talk about safety, and then they put them tombstones up at every corner on Fifth Avenue South that you can't see around, and then they plant bushes in between. You know, a car comes screaming down here on a bank robbery or something, you pull out, you're never going to see him till it's too late. Bank right. robbery. Right. But that's the same with a drunken driver, too. I mean, they both are committing to crimes. So. Okay. Hey, here. If it makes you feel any better, another listener has texted to say the Green New Deal will make this irrelevant as our electric cars won't be able to go fast <laughs> enough. So we're all good. We're all good. <laughs> And knows the uh, listener very well. <laughs> so, uh, there, Randy Kuhlman's coming up. We're going to talk sports here in just a little bit. Uh, uh, you're in favor of gay marriage over there, Randy. I know you are. You're a great liberal. So, <laughs> there we go. Uh, we'll just have somebody. I know. I, I really think we have too many Supreme Court justices. We just got to get down to one. And uh, that one person will make all our decisions for us in this regard. What do you think? Ann, are you good? No. <laughs> uh, it's great. It was great to have you both here. It always is. Yeah, uh, this was a lively. This was a lively one. Was good, yes. I was going to say. Was, was, Did you want to say anything about Mr. Sexton or Representative Sexton? Rep the, what? Uh, oh, yes. Yeah, so now he's got another title. Yes. He does. So he's yes. not only uh, Senate or uh, House Assistant Majority Party Leader, Leader. He's now a pioneer legislator. Le Pioneer. Legislator, yeah. So what Pioneer Legislator Week was this week is we um, have celebrated the living legislators who have been 20 years or more since they've taken oath. Mm -hmm. So Mike was has been 20 years since he served in the Senate. Yeah. So he's now a Pioneer legis Legislator. And then the evening was the people that have served over 20 years ago who have passed away. So he's in the living Pioneer group and then in the evening we had the service for the uh deceased pioneer that's, legislators that, that's that's terrific ann and tim thank you very much yep. four o'clock this is kbfd for don Iowa. nothing to hide i'm lisa brady fox news president trump reacting moments ago to u.s attorney general william barr who's telling top lawmakers he will release the Mueller report by mid-april if not sooner well i have great uh, confidence in the attorney general and uh, if that's what he'd like to do, uh, I have nothing to hide. This was a hoax. This was a witch hunt. Uh, I have absolutely nothing to hide. Several House committees set a deadline of April 2nd, next Tuesday, for the full Mueller report to be released. In his letter, Barr describes a painstaking process, along with Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein, to decide which parts of the report might have to be redacted by law. But he says there's no plan to allow the White House a privilege review 
before it's released. There's pushback already from the House Judiciary Committee chairman, Democrat Jerry Nadler, who says the Tuesday deadline stands and that Barr should work with the committee to request a court order for the release of any grand jury information. President Trump has a new vacancy to fill. The head of the Small Business Administration, Linda McMahon, is stepping down. She has been a superstar. Uh, the, uh, the fact is that I've known her for a long time. I knew she was good, but I didn't know she was that good. She has been one of our all-time favorites. McMahon alongside the president at his Florida estate for the announcement. He says she'll be helping with his re-election campaign. Another death just confirmed from those faulty Takata airbags that can explode with too much force. Honda says the death happened in Arizona in June of last year. That's the 24th person known to have been killed by the airbags worldwide. There have been more than 200 injuries as well, and millions of those airbags have been recalled. The end of the quarter on Wall Wall Street, and it ends with a high note. The Dow up 211 today to 25,928. This is Fox News. Hi, I'm Jay Farner, CEO of Quicken Loans, America's largest mortgage lender. Spring will be here soon. So if buying a new home is on your to-do list, right now is the time to call Quicken Loans. Learn about which mortgage options make sense for you and get a jump on your competition. With our exclusive Rate Shield approval, the low rate you lock today is protected for up to 90 days while you shop for your new home. With a Rate Shield approval, if rates go up, your low rate stays locked. But if rates go down, you get that new, even lower rate. Either way, you win. Talk to us today at 800 Quicken or go to rocketmortgage.com to take advantage. Here's another great reason to work with us. For a record nine years in a row, JD Power has ranked Quicken Loans highest in the nation in customer satisfaction for primary mortgage origination. Again, to lock in today's low mortgage interest rate and get the security of our exclusive rate shield approval, call us today at 800 Quicken or go to rocketmortgage.com. For JD Power award information, visit jdpower.com. Rate shield approval only valid on certain 30 year fixed rate loans. Call for cost information and conditions. Equal housing lender. License in all 50 states. NMLS number 3030. Rules at the Vatican aimed at preventing clergy sex abuse from being covered up. Staff will be legally required to report allegations of sex crimes, and any employee convicted of abusing a child or a vulnerable adult will be dismissed. We've seen the Pope open up his heart to the issue of sex abuse within the church. He made uh, he met with a range of abuse survivors in the Vatican last month when he convened a major summit on preventing the abuse of minors in the church. There was a lot of talk, a lot of discussion, but critics complain that no concrete action was taken. Fox's Amy Kellogg, one clergy sex abuse survivors group, says a policy change on paper is meaningless unless actions also change in real life. Still others hope the Vatican's example will lead to more widespread changes. A stream of parents in and out of a courthouse in Boston today, more than a dozen making initial appearances in the college cheating case. Prosecutors call Operation Varsity Blues. Charged with conspiracy and fraud and collectively paying $25 million in bribes to guarantee their children's acceptance to elite universities. Coaches, exam administrators and a test taker also charged. Actresses Felicity Huffman and Lori Lachlan are expected in court in the case next week. Fox is Jeff Manasso. Britain's Prime Minister still can't get a Brexit plan approved. A third major defeat here for Prime Minister Theresa May. A part of her proposal for Britain's EU split voted down again in Parliament. This government will continue to press the case for the orderly Brexit that the result of the referendum demands. But it's totally unclear what might come next. Opposition leader Jeremy Corbyn saying the proposal must change. And if the Prime Minister can't accept that, then she must go. Making a pitch for early elections to try and break the Brexit deadlock. Fox's Simon Owen in London. Meantime, the European Union calling a special summit for April 10th. And Mr. Brady, this is Fox News. Your news, your town. Your station, KBFD News, when it breaks. Good afternoon, I'm Alex Benzigal with the KVFD Afternoon News. The Iowa House has unanimously approved a bill that would increase the penalties for animal mistreatment. The measure approved Thursday by a vote of 96-0 to moves to the Senate. The bill heightens the criminal penalties for animal abuse and neglect 
Animal torture and abandonment. Animal welfare advocates have long considered Iowa among the worst states for mistreatment of animals in puppy mills. The state has thousands of dogs and more than 200 large-scale breeding operations. Under the House-backed bill, failure to provide an animal with access to food, drinkable water, sanitary shelter, veterinary care, and grooming could be considered animal abuse, punishable by two years in prison. A second offense would be a felony carrying up to five years in prison. Animal torture, which is intentionally causing prolonged suffering or death, would be a felony punishable up to five Five years. Abandoning an animal could carry a 30-day jail sentence, a year in jail if the animal is injured, or two years if it sustains a serious injury. The Fort Dodge Community School District announced on Thursday that Stacy Laird will be the next Fort Dodge Senior High School principal starting with the 2019-2020 school year. Laird currently serves as an assistant principal at FDSH. She replaces Ken Hayes, who accepted a position in the educational leadership program at the University of Northern Iowa. Organizers of a rally a few hours before Saturday's presidential candidate forum in Storm Lake say shrinking market options for farmers must be addressed. As Radio Iowa's O.K. Henderson reports, many of the Democratic candidates who've been traveling through Iowa this year already have focused on consolidation and mergers in the agricultural sector. Last August, New Jersey Senator Cory Booker proposed a moratorium on all corporate mergers. He argues federal antitrust laws aren't being followed and that's creating real problems for family farmers. Booker said during a recent Radio Iowa interview that the result is stagnant wages while corporate profits are at an 80-year high. So these trends continue. The very sort of fundamentals of our democracy are going to begin to unravel, and you're going to see a lot more people calling for more extremism uh, uh, in our country because they don't believe the democratic system or the economic system can work for them anymore. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders made a campaign swing through Iowa earlier this month and denounced concentration in the meatpacking industry as well as the Bayer-Monsanto merger. Neither Sanders nor Booker will be in Storm Lake for the Saturday afternoon candidate forum, but two other U.S. senators who are running for president will be. Senator Amy Klobuchar has been telling Iowa audiences she's been able to bridge the rural-urban divide in Minnesota. Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren has been calling for the breakup of monopolies and this week pledged to appoint federal officials who would reverse anti-competitive mergers like the Bayer-Monsanto merger. Radio Iowa, I'm O.K. Henderson. I'm Alex Benzigal with the KVFD Afternoon News. Have a great day. Here's the AM1400 KVFD weatherology forecast. Chance for scattered rain showers this afternoon, otherwise cloudy skies. Highs level off around 46, northeasterly winds 8 to 15 miles per hour. Chance for scattered rain showers tonight, lows dip down to about 29, cloudy skies expected. Lots of sunshine outside tomorrow, highs level off around 40. From the Weatherology Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Jennifer Wojcicki. Currently, it's 42. Congratulations to Good Samaritan Society Manson on their recent five-star rating awarded by the Federal Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Good Samaritan Manson received a perfect five-star rating for their outstanding health inspection results, staffing ratios, and quality of care. Their compassionate and dedicated team of employees sets them apart from other senior living centers in the area. To learn more, visit good-sam.com or drop by anytime. Good Samaritan Society Manson, when someone you care about needs caring for. What if I told you there was a way to step into another gear for your brain and be much sharper, more focused, and improve your memory to a level that you could only dream about and notice these results in 30 minutes? Hard to believe? Neuroscientists are calling this new brain discovery the biggest advancement in brain science to date. It's called Limitless, the brain pill of the future. Take it, and within 30 minutes, you'll transport your mind to a new level of focus and clarity you would have never thought possible. I took Limitless, and it started working in minutes. All of a sudden, it felt like a dark cloud had been lifted up right before my eyes. I have a mental clarity I've never felt before. Biz execs, athletes, teachers, and students are calling Limitless a secret weapon for the brain. You have nothing to lose. So call now and find out how to get a free bottle today. To find out how to get your free bottle of Limitless, call 800-681-9041. That's 800-681-9041. Free bottle for a limited time. Call now, 800-681-9041, 800-681-9041. Hi, I'm Jamie Brundage, owner of Historic Bruce Funeral Home. When you're planning the memorialization of your loved one, you're telling their story and sharing special memories with your family and friends. At Historic Bruce Funeral Home, we're proud to help you celebrate the life of your loved one. And we're here to guide you with your selections as we help you and your family say goodbye in a way that's right for you. Our staff is committed to compassionate care and attention to detail. Historic Bruce Funeral Home, 
Fort Dodge. Online at brucesfuneralhome.com. Michael Devine at AM 1400 KVFD. Listen to this. Making radio great again. Who are you then? Just the fly in the ointment, Hans. The monkey in the wrench. The pain in the ass. Michael Devine and Nevin Mulholland talking sports on AM 1400 KVFD. Actually, no. <laughs> Seems like we never talk with uh, Nevin Mulholland anymore. Uh, we always talk with Randy Cambrick, which uh, I think is a step up. But we'll have to. That'd be cool, man. Uh, yeah, that would not, be. A... Not Crane Brink. What did I say? Crane Brink. Did I say Crane Brink? <laughs> yeah. I'm going home. I've had names yeah. screwed up all Randy, day. Randy Crimebreak was a better basketball Randy. player than I was. <laughs> He's a pretty good basketball player. Yeah, he was. Right. Yeah, cool, man. Cool and coolie all the way, man. It's a cooler yeah. name than Crimebreak anyway. So there we are, ladies yep. and gentlemen. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I'm i sorry that Nevin isn't here because this is a big weekend. Boy, yes. there, boy the NCAA drags these things out anymore. Uh, That's when, only three weeks. Yeah, is that all? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, three weekends in a row. So we're going to go to uh, what we are. Uh, we're at the Elite Eight now. No, no, we're still, uh, we still have uh, the Sweet 16. Sweet 16. Okay. They so started, are we entering the Sweet 16 now? They or? started with four games last night and they got four more tonight. And then they'll be down to the, to the uh, Elite Eight. Um, so it's, uh, it's crunch time in, you know, for all these teams and, uh, the four games last night were really interesting. The, the first two, the six o'clock games were entertaining. There was a lot of offense. Uh, heck, the uh, Purdue Tennessee game ended up like 99 to 94 or something like yeah. that. Yeah. And then the, uh, the last two games, uh, the teams couldn't shoot. The defense was very good, but the shooting was horrendous. <laughs> and the, the scores were in the 50s and 40s. That was well. And who was that? Michigan. It was uh, Michigan. Just played horribly and got embarrassed by Texas Tech. Michigan had sixteen points at halftime. Sixteen um, points at halftime. Yeah, and they ended up. Are, yeah, they ended up. I think with forty-three points. Got beat like fifty-three to forty-four or something like that. Yeah. And, and then uh, <clears throat> the other game. What was the other game? That was uh, Virginia against. Uh, they play. I can't even remember. I watched so many games. <laughs> um, Virginia played uh, Oregon, okay. and uh, and again, the defensive intensity was there. And, of course, Virginia is one of the top defensive teams in the country. But, again, that score was in the, you know, 53 to 47 or something mm -hmm. like that. So it's uh, – uh, those games sometimes get hard to watch, especially, Mike, at my age when they start at 9 o'clock at night. Oh, I, tell I can't me. make it to 11 anymore. I'm falling asleep in my lazy voice. So. Oh, I know it. I do exactly the same thing. <laughs> but uh, – uh, hopefully the games tonight will be more entertainment, uh, entertaining. I think North Carolina plays Auburn tonight, and that's going to be a really entertaining game because Auburn right now is playing phenomenal basketball. They've got a, a load of three-point shooters. They're very athletic, very quick. And then you got North Carolina, which is one of the most powerful offenses in the country, So, and they like to fast break. So that should be an entertaining game tonight uh, between those two schools, and, and hopefully – a few more points scored than in the forties, but, uh, and, uh, and then the other game, what's the other game tonight? Oh, it's Duke Virginia tech, which mm -hmm. will be, that's an interesting game. I think this will be at least the third time that those two teams have met and maybe even the fourth time. So sometimes when you play a team three times, um, you uh, crazy things can happen, especially if you beat them twice. Although I, <laughs> I think Virginia Tech, I'm pretty sure Virginia Tech actually beat Duke this year when, when Williamson was out with his injury to his uh, knee. They played Virginia Tech and got beat by uh, Virginia Tech. Yeah, I I, right. I've heard the discussion about Duke and uh, well, you know, uh, Williamson's <clears throat> very important, but uh, they have other great players on their team. I've noticed that when they don't have Williamson, they're in trouble a lot of times. They, uh, I mean, Williamson is such a spark plug for the whole team. I mean, he's just he's yeah. just ridiculous. Well, you he's know, going to the NBA draft. Oh right? yeah, yeah, he'll be first person pick. There are people that have said that he is he is the uh, uh, maybe the best college basketball player to come out of college in in twenty years. Yeah, um, maybe longer. You maybe know? longer. And, is right. Uh, uh, you know, he is six seven. 
He's 285 pounds. Big, and, strong and he's, guy. He's, he's, he's got like a 48-inch vertical jump, so he, his head can – he can touch the rim with his head. Don't call him King Kong. We'll be off right. the air. Yeah, and he <laughs> – and – but he, the thing that really impresses me is how quick he is. He's extremely quick and very fast. I mean, and if you put him on a def in the NFL at a defensive end, he'd sack the quarterback almost every he time. Would. He'd be he'd be unstoppable. But well, he's a ferocious competitor. Oh yeah, he's a good competitor, and he's he's very skilled, and he's going to make a lot of money in the NBA. Believe me. Oh yeah, no. He's doubt. going to be one rich young man, but. Uh, you know, when you lose the best player in college basketball off your team, I don't care who you are, you're going to drop down a notch. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. And, uh, and even though Duke's got two other players that they say are going to be first round draft picks on their team, and and they've got other, uh, they've got four. I think they got five or six McDonald All Americans on their team right now. So they're loaded with talent, and uh, they'll be. Uh, but they've been scraping by. You know, they they should have gotten beat by uh central florida last week yeah central uh, florida was a tr turned out to be all they could handle yeah i mean central florida uh had two shots at the end of the game they had a a, a layup that just rolled off the rim and then the tip in that rolled around the rim and fell off right as the buzzer went off if either one of those go in they beat duke and yeah. duke was really lucky to win as a matter of fact mike shashevsky the coach of duke uh, admitted that in, in his post game interview that they were that they probably shouldn't have won and they were very lucky to win. Yeah, well, uh, Central Florida had the guy that was what seven, seven six seven six, seven, yeah, and a guy from Africa. <laughs> yeah, you know that you can't and you really can't intimidate a guy who comes from Africa. You yeah. know because they have, they have a very <laughs> perilous situation in some of those countries over here. Yeah. So he's out there and he's not impressed at all by Zion Williams. You yeah, know? he'd be the only one in the building, but he just wasn't. And uh, Zion struggled mightily against the guy. But I will always remember that game because Williams fought all the entire game, and he fought against that great big guy who was also pretty competitive. And uh, and Duke wound up winning. You're right; it yeah. was a close game, and I thought Central Florida for a while was going to take it. They were they were ahead for a while. Yeah, and, they were, uh, and then they they uh, and it was kind of controversial at the end too because uh, Duke uh, was shooting a free throw to. Uh, uh, tie the game and, and Zion missed the free throw and Duke got the rebound and put it back in for a basket to take a one point lead. And that's how they won. But if you looked at the replay, the Duke player in the middle position on the free throw lane shoved the guy from central Florida he right, did, didn't he? right in the middle of the back, just shoved him under the basket, got the rebound and laid it in. I mean, that's the thing that officials are supposed to be watching for on free throws and they just let it go. And, 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 uh, as that's you know if I was a, a Central Florida fan I would have been livid about that because yeah. that should have been called a foul and had it been called a foul uh, Central Florida wins that ball game so you know Central Florida has been popping up in all the sports that's where uh, well, the what's football. his name yeah, yeah Scott Frost, Frost uh, came from and gosh yeah. I, I hate that we're losing Hoiberg to Nebraska for God's sake but that's just the way it is I guess well we're not losing him he's not. I mean, he's, he's without a job right now. So, <laughs> But he could get a – come on, Fred, you could get a job other than Nebraska. Give us a break here. <laughs> yeah. Go up, go up and work for the Timberwolves again, for God's sake. You know, it's interesting because when that first broke, a lot of people thought, oh, there's no way. Why would he go to a football school like Nebraska? But uh, – and I know Nevis has said this before because he's been over there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, you know, they got a brand-new uh, – facility in downtown Lincoln that holds mm -hmm. like 17,000 people. It's a beautiful new arena. And then their practice facilities on campus, I guess, are second to none. So they've put a lot of money into their, uh, their basketball program. And uh, Nebraska has a lot of money. And, and the rumor program. has it that uh, I've heard this from a couple people that they're going to pay Hoiberg $28 million Jeez. for seven years. Wow. Uh, so, you know, that's hard to turn. Turn that, that down. That would be a tough one to turn down. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. a lot more than Steve Prome got. Yeah, uh, is it? Let's see. He got. Oh yeah. How much? What did he get? Two? I didn't see what they didn't. Did they, they? I don't think they disclosed it. Did they with this new contract? I well, they probably did. They never officially disclose it, but there's usually somebody with yeah. a pretty good inside. I know. I I know. I had heard last week that he was like out of the ten schools in the Big Twelve. Um that uh, he was 
ninth in in how much he was being paid. Really? Which would lead you to believe that he's probably being underpaid. So I'm guessing <laughs> with the new contract that, uh, you know, they bumped him up pretty good to where he's at least at the middle of the pack. And uh, um, so, but I don't know. I'm guessing he's probably making, you know, r probably around 2 million, I suppose. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you divide, you know, 27, you know, what is it? That's 4 million a year, 20, yeah. you know, 28 million for seven years, 4 right. million a year. That makes Hoiberg probably puts him in the top 10 in the country for basketball coaches. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not as much as Krzyzewski make. I think Krzyzewski Duke is making, I think he's either making nine or 11 million. No, oh, is he making <laughs> oh, that God. much? It's, un, it's, a, it's Cause, unbelievable cause how much Sa they're paying. Saban down in Alabama, who's, you know, he's probably making seven or eight million. Oh yeah. He's making, I think he's making nine or 11 as well, but, but, that's football, you That's know, football. and football brings in a lot more a lot revenue than basketball does. And, and of course, uh, um, and both of them are, uh, I mean, that's just a lot of money, but, uh, so yeah, Fred's going to probably going to go to Nebraska and, and, uh, he'll be in the big 10 and, and, uh, so that'll just give the clone fans even one more thing to root against the Hawkeyes when they play Nebraska, they'll be rooting for Fred. Right. <laughs> so, um, but, uh, so anyway, it, yeah, he, he's doing that. And, and, uh, uh, and then, uh, well, the Otzeberger, uh, the coach from South Dakota state, who was a uh, assistant for Hoiberg at Iowa state, uh, just took the head job at UNLV in, in Las Vegas, the so, running rebels, the running rebels. I can't, that was something that surprised me. Yeah, uh, you, you don't go from South Dakota to UNLV. Yeah, that's there's some truth to that, and and he didn't. I, I agree. I didn't think that Otzenberger fit that mold of the Running Rebels in, in in Las Vegas. Usually, they're looking for a guy with a lot more flash, so to speak. And I'm not saying that in a negative way because uh, Otzenberger. I, I can't remember his first name, Otzenberger, but I'll tell you, he's a heck of a coach, and he's a very he was an outstanding recruiter for Hoiberg. And then he was also with uh, Prome for a year, I think. And uh, so he's, uh, I think he's got a great career ahead of him. Um, but, you know, no one's had much. Well, you know, Lon Kruger had a little bit of success at, at, uh, at UNLV. Uh, but, you know, when Tark the Shark retired or got fired, I can't remember which it was. It but, was kind of a mutual agreement thing that he was going <clears> to, yeah. Yeah. But they haven't had that much success after that after his that program after he left the program it was maybe it's because he was cheating i don't know but um uh, so unlv's running rebel program is not near what it used to be you know 10 15 right, right. 20 years ago not even close so uh we'll see what happens with that but um uh, the yeah. dark years were pretty good years they're very controversial i don't remember oh yeah I, I don't know what Tark was up to back then. I don't recall. Well, he was always there was always rumors that he was buying players and you know paying money under the I'm table. Shocked, shocked, yeah. round up the usual suspects. You yeah, know? <laughs> and uh, and he was always you know he, those were the rumors all the time and and uh, and he probably was, but so were a lot of other people oh, back then God. too. Yeah, I was gonna say, I was gonna say, I uh, what do you make about this Michael Avenetti character? Uh, uh, threatening uh, Nike that uh, he would reveal information about Nike unless they gave him a twenty minute uh, twenty million dollar consulting thing or whatever yeah. it was. What is all that about? Well, he learned the hard way. I mean, he did that. He did that to Trump. Yes, he did. Then he did it to Kavanaugh. He that, did. that didn't yeah. work. Where he made up stuff. He's and asking now, for it, isn't he? And now he's doing it to Nike. Even Nike said, mm -hmm. "We're not taking it. We're going to sue you, or we're going to not sue you, but we're going to." prosecute you you know and turn it over to the fbi they did and uh and it sounds like this guy is just uh, a major league uh scumball you know he and, was a hero of the democratic party and all the big liberal tv networks and newspapers yeah. just last fall yeah. but uh, they don't want to talk about him now oh. <laughs> as long as he could say i have this on trump or i'm i'm a creepy porn lawyer that or whatever you know, uh, you know, they, he was great. He was on Morning Joe and all these great uh, liberal shows, but uh, they don't really want much to do with him anymore. Yeah, of course they're looking pretty stupid anyway. Uh, Rachel Maddow and all those people right now—they're looking pretty dumb anyway. Yeah, it's uh, you know April fifth, I think, is the date, Mike, that 
will be an interesting date in college basketball because I believe that's when, um, and I can't remember exactly what it is, but they're going to, the FBI is coming out with a lot of their, their charges on April 5th. And there's a lot of nervous programs, nervous coaches out there that uh, you just hear rumors about that they've had these relationships with uh, with Nike and and these shoe companies, Adidas, and and uh, they were bartering influence for players and and paying players money. And of course, you know the classic one is the head coach at LSU that has an outstanding team. You know LSU's in final Sweet Sixteen. Uh, their coach is no longer coaching them. He's on. He's been suspended because they've got a they've got him on tape basically saying, uh, yeah, I paid this kid money and I'm disappointed that his handlers got a lot of it instead of the kid. <laughs> yeah. So, they, they get you saying that it's bad. Yeah. And, uh, and so, uh, uh, but there's, there's a lot of rumors floating around there about other, other programs, including Kansas, you know, and, and Kansas has had two star recruits, uh, deemed ineligible over the last two years. Um, you know, for, uh, because they were being investigated for, mm -hmm. for this and even other violations. And, uh, of course the Kansas people and Bill Self are all claiming, you know, total innocence, but, <laughs> um, but they, you know, the thing that the FBI can do that the NCAA can't is wiretap you. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, they've been wiretapping a lot of people and, um, and, uh, they've got them on tape. So and I hope they wiretapped Avenetti. Yeah, <laughs> I hope they did. Well, the one that's interesting is is Kraft, because he wants to try a jury by trial. I mean, a trial by jury. They supposedly have him on video. I know it. And then oh God! If, they, if you're on video with that, I don't know if you'd want to go <laughs> take it to with a jury two, trial with, with two different women. I mean, so I don't know that that'll be interesting to say the least. You swing I, by the strip mall. You know, it, it, apparently it's not. Ex it's more of a case of... Uh, That's how they got the name, Mike. Yeah. Strip mall. I guess so. <laughs> you know, there was a lot of huffing and puffing about, oh, he's taking advantage of human trafficking in these poor girls. Turns out, you know, they're like 50 years old and they're veterans, yeah. you know. They're veterans. This is what we do for a living. And by the way, uh, you know, these are Asian girls. I spent a couple of years in Asia. Uh, they have a different attitude toward prostitution than we do, frankly. Uh, they, uh, you know, I, I remember the, the girls there who worked in some of those places. They had cards identifying their trade and when the last time they were checked for uh, STDs and all those sort of things. It's very different than, and, and by I, the way, I, I was in Thailand in 1973 and the prime minister of Thailand was in his 50s and was in, was in a gay relationship with a much younger guy. And nobody blinked an eye. That's, you know, that's just, uh, they're not a, well, they're, that's the, they, they but, have a more relaxed attitude towards those sort of things. Yeah. The, the, the key is though, that there is human trafficking through these massage parlors. And I, you know, I credit, uh, the FBI or whoever is trying to stop that. It, it, it's, it's a horrible thing. It needs to be stopped. Oh, it is. And, if and, you're, to my mind, it's disgusting. Yeah, it is. And, and, uh, so, um, and there was just a big article in the Des Moines Register last week, front page article about, I mean, uh, Des Moines is being targeted as one of the, uh, as a very active city, a city in the country for uh, human trafficking through massage parlors. And uh, so I think you're going to see even crackdowns, uh, uh, in, you know, in Des Moines area because there's. Well, and, and I can tell you as well that in Asia, parents sell their children, which is also a tradition that I find appalling. Uh, so, uh, if, uh, if those sorts of things are going on of traffic in that regard, I don't care about different cultures. I want people prosecuted for doing that in our country. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't, I mean, that's, you know, I, that's a general statement because I, I can tell you Asian families are often very strong families, but there are low lives You're right. everywhere. There's low lives. And, and uh, but, and, uh, it isn't illegal. Let me put it that way. Oh, uh, maybe okay. it's not condoned yeah. necessarily, yeah. but, or uh, looked on with favor, but. I'm not trying to take a shot at uh, families in Asia. Mm. You're right. Uh, but uh, it does happen, and there's no criminal prosecution for it, yeah. which is not good. Anyway, Randy Kuhlman is our guest. We'll be back talking sports instead of this nonsense here in just a few minutes. Michael Devine at AM 1400 KVFD. Listen to this. Making radio great again. A little sexy, but more disturbing. Divine Intervention is online at yourfortdodge.com. On Twitter at jmike1400. 
All right, it's exactly 4.30. News, weather, and more sports coming up at AM 1400 KBFD, The Voice of Fort Dunn. Imagining a better bank starts with looking at the savings rates most banks offer and saying, really? Capital One is building something better. You can open a Capital One savings account with one of the nation's best savings rates from anywhere, like here or here or here. One of the nation's best savings rates opened online at a Capital One location or from anywhere. That's banking reimagined. What's in your wallet? For consumers only. Offered by Capital One NA member FDIC. Copyright 2018 Capital One. What if I told you there was a way to step into another gear for your brain and be much sharper, more focused, and improve your memory to a level that you could only dream about and notice these results in 30 minutes? Hard to believe? Neuroscientists are calling this new brain discovery the biggest advancement in brain science to date. It's called Limitless, the brain pill of the future. Take it, and within 30 minutes, you'll transport your mind to a new level of focus and clarity you would have never thought possible. I took Limitless, and it started working in minutes. All of a sudden, it felt like a dark cloud had been lifted up right before my eyes. I have a mental clarity I've never felt before. Biz execs, athletes, teachers, and students are calling Limitless a secret weapon for the brain. You have nothing to lose. So call now and find out how to get a free bottle today. To find out how to get your free bottle of Limitless, call 800-681-9041. That's 800-681-9041. Free bottle for a limited time. Call now, 800-681-9041, 800-681-9041. Thrifty White Community Health Corner. Immunizations are not just for kids. Adults should keep their vaccinations up to date as well. Thrifty White Pharmacies, certified immunization pharmacists can vaccinate against shingles, measles, pneumonia, and more. Staying up to date on your vaccines can keep you healthy and prevent diseases from affecting your family and your community. Visit your local Thrifty White Pharmacy. Our knowledgeable pharmacy staff is here to help determine which vaccines are right for you. Gunderson Funeral Home and Cremation Services. Oh, why not just cremate me when I'm gone? Sounds simple, doesn't it? However, there are many options to consider when cremation is chosen. From simple to detailed, we at Gunderson Funeral Home and Cremation Services can help you create a unique commemoration. Gunderson Funeral Home and Cremation Services. Your news, your town. Your station, KVFD News, when it breaks. Good afternoon, I'm Alex Benzigal with the KVFD Afternoon News. The Iowa House has unanimously approved a bill that would increase the penalties for animal mistreatment. The measure approved Thursday by a vote of 96 to 0 moves to the Senate. The bill heightens the criminal penalties for animal abuse and neglect, animal torture and abandonment. Animal welfare advocates have long considered Iowa among the worst states for mistreatment of animals in puppy mills. The state has thousands of dogs and more than 200 large-scale breeding operations. Under the House-backed bill, failure to provide an animal with access to food, drinkable water, sanitary shelter, veterinary care, and grooming could be considered animal abuse, punishable by two years in prison. A second offense would be a felony carrying up to five years in prison. Animal torture, which is intentionally causing prolonged suffering or death would be a felony punishable up to five years. Abandoning an animal could carry a 30-day jail sentence, a year in jail if the animal is injured, or two years if it sustains a serious injury. The Fort Dodge Community School District announced on Thursday that Stacy Laird will be the next Fort Dodge Senior High School principal starting with the 2019-2020 school year. Laird currently serves as an assistant principal at FDSH. She replaces Ken Hayes, who accepted a position in the educational leadership program at the University of Northern Iowa. Organizers of a rally a few hours before Saturday's presidential candidate forum in Storm Lake say shrinking market options for farmers must be addressed. As Radio Iowa's O.K. Henderson reports, many of the Democratic candidates who've been traveling through Iowa this year already have focused on consolidation and mergers in the agricultural sector. Last August, New Jersey Senator Cory Booker proposed a moratorium on all corporate mergers. He argues federal antitrust laws aren't being followed and that's creating real problems for family farmers. Booker said during a recent Radio Iowa interview that the result is stagnant wages while corporate profits are at an 80-year high. So these trends continue. The very sort of 
fundamentals of our democracy are going to begin to unravel. And you're going to see a lot more people calling for more extremism uh, uh, in our country because they don't believe the democratic system or the economic system can work for them anymore. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders made a campaign swing through Iowa earlier this month and denounced concentration in the meatpacking industry as well as the Bayer-Monsanto merger. Neither Sanders nor Booker will be in Storm Lake for the Saturday afternoon candidate forum, but two other U.S. senators who are running for president will be. Senator Amy Klobuchar has been telling Iowa audiences she's been able to bridge the rural-urban divide in Minnesota. Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren has been calling for the breakup of monopolies and this week pledged to appoint federal officials who would reverse anti-competitive mergers like the Bayer-Monsanto merger. Radio Iowa, I'm O.K. Henderson. I'm Alex Benzigal with the KVFD Afternoon News. Have a great day. Here's the AM 1400 KVFD weatherology forecast. Chance for scattered rain showers this afternoon, otherwise cloudy skies. Highs level off around 46, northeasterly winds 8 to 15 miles per hour. Chance for scattered rain showers tonight, lows dip down to about 29, cloudy skies expected. Lots of sunshine outside tomorrow, highs level off around 40. From the Weatherology Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Jennifer Wojcicki. Currently, it's 42. Fox Business Network on Wall Street. The major averages closing higher for the day, month, and for the quarter with trade optimism lifting stocks. The Dow having its best quarter in six years, closing up 211 points. NASDAQ up 60. S&P 500 having its best first quarter in 21 years, up 19 points. And Lyft arriving on Wall Street today. Its shares spiking in their stock trading debut on the NASDAQ, opening up over 87 bucks a share. Its IPO was priced at 72 and its shares closed at $78.29. And instead of celebrating the first day of trading at the NASDAQ in New York, staffers from Lyft marking the occasion at a defunct auto dealership in downtown L.A., which they recently bought to turn into a driver services center. And shares of RH, the company formerly known as Restoration Hardware, plunging nearly 22 percent today after reporting mixed quarterly results and slashing its 2019 forecast. With the Fox Business Report, I'm Hillary Barsky. What does building a better bank look like? It starts with building Capital One cafes, warm, inviting places that feel nothing like a typical bank, where you can open an account with no fees or minimums in five minutes, and you'll always find people ready to help you, not sell you. Welcome to Banking Reimagined. What's in your wallet? For consumers only, offered by Capital One and a member FDIC, cafes available in select locations. Copyright 2018 Capital One. Take the worry out of winter with a winter weather advisor on KVFD brought to you by Community Health Center Fort Dodge, offering dental, behavioral health, and general medical assistance for men, women, and children. They're committed to your well-being. Community Health Center, get to know them. And Creative Cakes, making life sweet with espresso, lunch, gourmet cupcakes, and other sweet treats. Creative Cakes in the Crossroads Mall, Fort Dodge. They make life sweet. Listen for the winter weather advisor on the voice of Fort Dodge, AM 1400 KVFD. The bakers of Country Hearth and Village Hearth Breads are proud to support local education with Loaves for Learning, the program that makes it easy to earn money for your school. Enjoy Country Hearth and Village Hearth all-natural breads, buns, bagels, and more. Then save the UPC from the package for your school to collect and redeem. Each is worth five cents and can be used for books, computers, sports, music, whatever your school needs, up to $10,000 a year. Learn more at loavesforlearning.com. Country Hearth and Village Hearth Breads. Baking our best for you. This is AM 1400 KBFT, the voice of 4 Dutch 439. Obituaries this hour brought to you by the historic Bruce's Funeral Home at 923 First Avenue South here in Fort Dodge. You may contact the historic Bruce's Funeral Home by calling 515-576-5117 or online at www.brucesfuneralhome.com. Tom Pingle has died. Thomas Douglas Pingle has died at the age of 86. Mr. Pingle passed away on Sunday at the Simpson Health Center Friendship Haven here in Fort Dodge. There will be a service honoring the life of Thomas Douglas Pingle, and that'll be at 3 o'clock in the afternoon tomorrow at the First Presbyterian Church here in town with Reverend Dr. Austin Hill officiating. Obituaries this hour brought to you by the historic Bruce's Funeral Home at 923 First Avenue South Fort Dodge. You may contact the historic Bruce's Funeral Home by calling 515-576-5117 or online at www dot bruce's funeral home.com 
This is AM 1400 KBFD, the voice of Fort Dodge. Randy Kuhlman and Sports coming up. Spring into savings at Mackey Motors in Lake City. 2018 Chevy half ton crew caps up to $12,500 off. Or a 2019 Chevy heavy duty K2500 crew cap up to $10,800 off. Try off this 2018 Buick Regal. Take $9,500 off. Or this 2018 Buick Cascada convertible $9,900 off. We need 30 more deals by the end of the month. Find new roads at Mackey Motors in Lake City or MackieMotors.com while they last. Flood victims in Nebraska need our help. Alpha Media Fort Dodge is a designated donation site for the thousands of displaced people in Nebraska. Items needed are cleaning supplies, toiletries, diapers and baby wipes, new pillows and blankets, heavy-duty trash bags, individually wrapped snacks, cases of bottled water, pet food, hygiene items, and gently used clothing. If you can help our neighbors in Nebraska, please drop off your donations at our studios, 200 North 10th Street. All items will be delivered to Nebraska this Saturday. Thank you from all of us at Alpha Media. Media. Michael Devine at AM 1400 KVFD. Listen to this. Making radio great again. The other number one seeds are UNC, UVA, and Gonzaga. And I have a theory. I know this might be controversial, but here it is. I don't believe Gonzaga exists. I have never heard the word Gonzaga outside of college basketball. I don't know where it is. I don't know anyone who went there. I don't even know anyone who knows anyone who went there. Go on YouTube and search Gonzaga. All you will get are basketball videos. Nothing else. Gonzaga is the I have a girlfriend in Canada of college. Michael Devine, the mayor of Manville. It's a fancy title for a part-time job. Michael Devine at AM 1400 KVFD. Boy, that's my sentiment, I'll tell you. You know, I've actually been to the Gonzaga campus. And, of course, Randy and Nevin jumped down my throat uh, when I don't <laughs> know that Gonzaga is this great basketball college. And I'm going, Gonzaga? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I think they only have a student enrollment about three thousand. Uh, you know, maybe I've heard that. Maybe it's, I, that's I think wrong. a little bigger than that. But they're uh, they are a iconic basketball program. Have been for many years. Uh, when's the last <clears> time <throat> have they won uh, the NCAA tournament? No, I, they haven't won. They were in the Final Four a year or two ago, and and uh, but they they've always had really good teams. And and uh, uh, the problem that Gonzaga has is they're in a they're not in a strong conference. They're out on the West Coast. It's not a strong conference. So once the conference season starts, you just don't hear about them across the country. Uh, in the in the early season, in November, December, they're playing the big boys all over the country and generally beating them. And uh, they beat Duke this year. Did they? Oh, yeah, early in the year. And that was when Duke was totally healthy. And uh, and I'll tell you, they've looked really, really good in the tournament this year. I I actually picked them to get beat, but I'll tell you, they look like a Final Four team right now. And, you know, uh, I have not seen them because I've been trying. I've been concentrating on the Big Ten, Big Twelve teams. Yeah, and if Duke's on, I'll check them out sure. as well. But yeah, but they're they're a really good team, and and uh, despite Jimmy Kimmel, I think that was Kimmel, wasn't it? That was Kimmel. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. You know, if you knew anything about NBA basketball, you've heard of Gonzaga because John Stockton was was from Gonzaga, and he's the uh, He's a Hall of Fame basketball player for the Utah Jazz and the all-time NBA leader in assists. So uh, obviously Jimmy must not be a big basketball fan, but uh, among other things, I, sure, <laughs> <laughs> I won't go any farther. But anyway, um, uh, yeah, Gonzaga is a, a a great program, and and you know other schools have tried to imitate them to see if they could get the same thing done, and they just haven't. Um, and Mark Few, the coach out there, is highly respected, very successful. But what he has done over the years is is kind of like Fred Hoiberg at Iowa State. Pew built his program on transfers. He had a lot of transfers come in. And uh, kids that were good players but weren't happy somewhere. And he seemed to pick them up and, uh, and coach them up, and, and they'd have great teams. And then he also recruits very well out there now, too. But he uh, – they're an interesting program because uh, uh, they're 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 in a smaller not, they're not in a big major conference but yet they'll go out and play all the blue blood blue blood blue bloods uh, in the in the early season including Kentucky and and Duke and all those kind of programs and they, they don't they don't fear them at all and they'll play them tough and and see 
they can never get them to come to Gonzaga to play at home because none of the Blue Bloods will go to Spokane, Washington to play them on their home court. Yeah. So they have to play them on neutral courts or they have to play them on the road at, you know, at, at, at the other, at the opponent's facility. Yeah, Spokane's in Eastern, Eastern Washington. It's not, you know, yeah. I've been out there. It's not, you know, that nice a town, frankly. Mm -hmm. I mean, but I, I was wrong, of course, on the student population of Gonzaga. It's uh, 75, 67, 7,567. As of 2018, what the 2019 student population yeah. is, I don't know. But that's still not a big school. I mean, uh, no, no. I mean, Iowa and Iowa State are what 20, 25,000. Well, Duke's Duke's probably smaller than that. Mm -hmm. How know? big is Duke? Do you think? I'm guessing Duke's like at 6,000 students, but I don't know you think for so? sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, but uh, you could be right. Yeah. I, you know, it's it's a private private school. It is, and. and and it's a beautiful, beautiful school. I've been out there. It's a, it's a gorgeous campus. Yeah. I, uh, you know, I just by coincidence last week I watched uh, 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 fantastic lies about the Duke lacrosse team a few years mm -hmm. ago. What, what a mess that was! What a horrible, horrible. Those boys, those three boys, came about that far from going to prison for life, for God's sake, oh. based on completely false testimony by the district attorney who spent one day in jail. I was I trying to, I think he was trying to make a political career for him. Yeah. Wasn't he? Yeah, he, yeah. And he was willing to apparently to send these poor kids to jail for something he knew they didn't do. It's terrible. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, uh, you know, with all the stuff going on with the FBI and everywhere else. And now you got this whole total miscarriage of justice in Chicago with that Jesse Smollett. Oh, it is situation. And what then, was that? You know, I'll tell you, that was nullification. That was nullification. They used to have jury nullification. Uh, well, in the South, rednecks had vote to keep their obviously guilty racist cousins out of jail for beating up black people. And that was called uh, 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 nullification. So now it seems to come back. And, and, and here it is again with this. I don't know why they wanted to keep this guy out of trouble. I don't know. Because he's, well, he he's a, evidently he's. He's very wealthy, you know. He's a movie star and or a TV star. There is a feeling that and, we and he's 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 politically connected. Yeah, I mean, he's got connections to the Obamas. He's got connections to Kamala Harris. Yeah, um, and uh, and you know who knows how the strings got pulled and what happened happened, but um, it's it'll be interesting to see how it all turns out. It's my understanding the Justice Department's going to go and investigate that. Well, whole Trump's thing. Trump's uh, barking about it now, but uh, I don't know. By the way, the pop student population at Duke is 15,984. Wow, I was way off. 15,000? Uh, 15, 15,984 really? as of 2018. Wow. Well, I, I stand corrected. That's, I, that's, I've never seen a campus. Uh, it's a beautiful campus. Um, it it's kind of has a look of a, ca as a of a castle. All the buildings are have the same facades, kind of a... Uh, uh, you know, kind of a European castle type of look to it. And uh, it's down in a valley surrounded by trees. It's absolutely uh, really? gorgeous. Yeah, it's gorgeous, gorgeous campus. And and then there, the arena that, that they play in uh, is Cameron Indoor, they call it, uh, is right on campus. It holds about 8,000 people, small and, and old. And, 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 uh, you know, and and yet it's kind of like a Wrigley Field of college basketball, sure. or you know, or the uh, Red Sox Park. Uh, I forget the name. Fenway. Of it. Fenway. Uh, you know, the same kind of ambiance. You know, of hey, this is sacred ground. We're not going to change it. We're not going to touch it. You know. By the way, uh, Major League Baseball is underway. Yeah. Uh, Boston played Seattle last night. Uh, the defending got hammered, didn't they? Yeah, seven to two. Seattle uh, uh, beat uh, the Red Sox with Chris Sale on the mound. Chris Sale blew up. He's one of the top pitchers last year, both for the Red Sox and Major League Baseball. He lasted three innings. Yeah. They knocked him out of the box fast. But the Cubs look good. Yes, they did. They, uh, they, uh, uh, they uh, Javi had two home runs, and and Brian had a home run, yeah. and, and uh, only gave up six hits. So maybe this will, maybe the Cubs will make another run at it this year. Well, I hope so. Chris Bryant's got to come back. Yeah. Uh, for that to happen, and. Uh, uh, Rizzo, uh, needs to play the same kind of ball he played last year. He played a good, uh, he had a good year last year and, uh, Lester is getting a little older, uh, to be a pitcher, but he was still throwing that ball last year really hard. Yeah. So, uh, uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll have a, a great year for the Cubs. Everybody's picking the Yankees to win the world series already. Are they? Of course. Yeah. But, uh, 
and the Yankees have a great team. There's no doubt, you know, and, uh, uh, the, the, I can't, uh, hate the Yankees. They've had too great a tradition, but I don't have to like them that much either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, they, you know, with George, of course it's not George anymore, but you know, they were, uh, major league baseball would, you know, it, it was the rich just got richer and the poor got poor because, sure. you know, unlike the NFL, uh, with revenue sharing and all of that, you just don't, you don't have that same kind of model in, in major league baseball. No, you don't. And so it's, it's, it makes it harder for these smaller market teams to, compete year in year out and that's why i just love it like when when kansas city had those great teams a few years ago and won the uh, then they win the world series about i don't know four or five years ago yeah i think they did yeah. and uh what a what a great thing for kansas city but you know you're just pulling for the underdog there because they're a small market yeah and then i think the next kansas year city's that, definitely that way yeah and uh of course the twins have been you know they're, they haven't been the twins of old in a long time but not in a long Those time. twin fans are they've always got hope until about the end of uh April and then it's over. <laughs> yeah, in the first in the first hour today we had Dave Flattery. I know Dave's oh yeah, yeah big twins fan. A big twins fan. I don't know if uh if his brothers are. Of course he's got plenty of brothers, but Dave is uh, certainly a big twins fan. Yeah. And, and uh yeah, gosh. You know, you and I are the same age. I still remember in the what sixty five. Uh, I, I was a kid in probably mm -hmm. uh, uh, seventh, eighth grade, ninth grade, maybe I don't know. But uh, the twins were taking on the Dodgers, and we all had our transistor radios. And somebody was always getting busted with their transistor radio, listening to, oh, because we class. didn't have night games. Yeah, you know? yeah, we were listening in class. You yeah, know? and uh, oh god, oh, I remember going up to the <clears> old <throat> Metropolitan Stadium and sure. watching the Harmon Killebrew and all those guys, Rod Carew, and and they had some great players. <laughs> Great teams, great players, and yes, um, old Metropolitan Stadium, which is now the the, the Mega Mall up there. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, Jim Mudcat Grant and uh, Jim Cott and uh, oh yeah, Tony Oliva, Rich Rollins, yeah, those are great years. Yeah, oh, they're great players. Yeah, Tony Oliva was a great player. Yeah, and uh, yeah. no question. Uh, so, anyway, this is AM fourteen hundred KBFD, the voice of Fort Dodge. It took the Twins a few years to win, but they did in the late eighties with Ken Urbeck and. Gaetti and uh, those are great teams. I think yeah, they won a couple times, I think. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, I don't. And I, you know, I haven't talked to anybody. I haven't paid a lot of close attention if they've had any kind of significant rule changes this year for Major League Baseball. Um, you know, they're always talking about trying to speed the game up. You know, and may, maybe putting in like basketball has a shot clock. Maybe put in a a, a pitcher's clock. You know, to to speed up the game. And of course, they haven't done that, but I, I don't know if they've made some other rule changes to try to do that. But, uh, they, uh, 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 but you know, it's uh, and uh, and I don't know. I know the Twins. I think are at home. And I don't know what the weather's like. I don't there. know. I don't know either. <laughs> this is AM fourteen hundred KV KVFD. You're on the air. Yeah, did you hear the rule they want change they want to make for next year? A pitcher comes in the game has to face three batters before you can pull him. Oh yeah, I did hear that. Yeah, you just can't uh, you just can't bring a specialty pitcher in for a batter anymore. Oh, they, that's a new rule. That's a new. Oh, rule. Oh, okay, yeah. interesting. For, yeah, for next year, two thousand twenty, not oh. this year, but they want to put that in next year. Okay, that works for me yeah. actually. That's interesting. That'll change yeah, the strategy. I think, I think that's a bad. If they want to speed the game up, cut down the time in between innings and uh, get rid of a few commercials. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're not going to do that because that pays a lot of bills <laughs> yeah, for the teams. Yeah. But you know, it 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 really changes the strategy because you got, you know, they're pulling batters to left-handed, right-handed pitchers. To, you know, oh, but, it does. So if you got a pitch to at least three of them, that'll change a lot of strategy. I've there. seen I've seen in the playoffs a pitcher come in, throw one pitch, pitch and yeah. he's out. You know. And they yeah. bring in another guy who throws, who pitches to one batter. You know, yeah. that's, that's really special. Oh, game. that happens a lot. You yeah. bet. <clears throat> yep. And uh, yeah, that'll be interesting. I didn't know they that they made that change. So yeah, I heard that. I did hear that, and I think it's a good change. Uh, you know, the, the other interesting change that uh, I think the NFL has passed is now they're going to review pass interference calls or in the NFL or plays that weren't even flagged as pass interference, they're going to even review those like the one in, you know, with the, with with the, the Rams the, and the, the Saints. Saints. And uh, obvious, I don't know what the officials were thinking there. That was an obvious pass interference. Well, they just blew it. But, you know, it'll be interesting to see because the NFL, too, is concerned about the length of the games. 
And yet it seems to me when you start reviewing pass interference calls, because quite honestly, I almost think you could call pass interference on every pass play practically the way they chicken fight with their hands and do all that sort of stuff anymore. And, and uh, so it'll be interesting to see how they control that because it's not tied to a coach's challenge. It, it's going to be determined by the official in the booth, the, the replay official. So they could be reviewing a lot of, a lot of pass plays. I mean, it, that could be a really significant rule change. So it'll be uh-huh. interesting how that, <clears throat> that'll work out but uh yeah and then and then in college basketball my goodness i mean i'm so tired of these officials stopping the game to walk over to the monitor <laughs> and and look to see if this is a flagrant one or you know when the ball who touched it last going out of bounds and i mean it's just the delay of those games and sometimes it takes them five minutes to make that decision when they should be able to make it in 30 seconds and where was it? What, what game was I watching last weekend? And I hadn't seen this in years. A player fouled. The official called the foul. He stopped and he raised his hand. I haven't seen that in a long called time. Called the player? Oh, yeah. You yeah. Know, that, that used to be a, kind of a big deal. Oh, yeah. He had to. He used to yeah. have to. He used yeah. to be required. Yeah. Um, he was probably <laughs> raising his hand. It was probably wasn't the guy that actually made the foul. He was probably trying to protect his his teammate, who was probably a better player. Could be. Because that's the only time they raise their hand anymore. <laughs> is the, hey, call it on me so call our star doesn't get to pick up his fourth foul or something, you know. Uh, but the point being is that uh, basketball is a full contact sport now. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just uh, – I mean, again, Zion Williams in, uh, in that uh, center from uh, Central Florida, they were fighting to the death. Yeah. I mean – uh, I mean, that guy from Central Florida was so tall, seven six, and he could just hold his arms out like it was a big umbrella. Well, Zion would fight right through that. Yeah, you know, and yeah. that's it's really something. Well, you know, the NIT this year, Mike, and the, if you, I know you probably haven't watched any NIT games. No, I don't. Creighton is in the although they got beat out, but the NIT is doing a. They're they're using the NBA mm-hmm. widen lane in in college NIT tournament. Mm-hmm. And I've been advocating that for years because if you widen the lane like the NBA does, it opens things up more around the basket. Mm-hmm. There's more room to drive to the basket, and and you get more slashing and people taking the ball to the hole. You know when you got more space, and you know these kids now are so big and athletic. Uh, they're bigger now in college than the NBA was. You know 40 years ago when they widened the lane. So I, I think the college game ought to they ought to widen the lane and and I think that would help open things up more for teams to be able to cut to the basket and and rather than the game just becoming a three point shooting contest, yeah. you know, which is kind of what it's becoming right now. I mean, some of these teams are putting up forty threes, forty shots that are three pointers, and uh, and so it it uh, I, I think that'd be a good move for for college basketball and. And they're also looking at speeding up the game. They're looking at changing the, the bonus situation from uh, instead of going, they're, they're actually looking at going to quarters instead of a half. You know, play instead of a 20 minute and a half, play two 10 minute quarters and then start your foul situation over. You don't get into the bonus until you have five team fouls each quarter so that you're not running to the line, you know, all the time with fouls. Mm-hmm. Um, and that'll speed up the game as well. And uh, as a wrestling fan, let me advocate again to get the transgender uh, girls out of girls wrestling. If wrestling is going to survive as a sport, uh, Dan Gable, Brands, uh, a lot of people, Kale Sanderson, have, have said we have to have women's uh, wrestling in college. Fine. So now we have these guys who've declared themselves women and they're winning wrestling. Tournaments. Is that right? You know, and what's going to happen? The girls are going to say, what do we want to wrestle these guys for? Yeah. Yeah, because they're guys. I'm sorry. You know, let's get out of the fantasy. <laughs> you know, if you're a transgender whatever and you identify as something that you're obviously not, that's your business, I guess. But you you can't go out for female wrestling. I mean, they're beating the hell out of the girls. They're just working them over. Yeah. Pen- I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, men's bodies and women's bodies are different. I think I remember a situation. I think it was out in California where – that same thing happened in a track meet where, yeah. where a transgender transgender male was running in the, the women's the girls oh, yeah. track meet and was winning all the races and, and the girls were protesting that as well. So. Well, we're such cowards we can't we can't even identify who it's, a man and woman is. It's terrible. I I don't I wouldn't want to be a, an athletic director these days. Oh, God, trying to deal with all this stuff. It? 
It'd be tough to do. Randy Coombs has been our guest. Thank you, Randy. Okay, Mike. Five o'clock in the afternoon, KBFT Fort Dodge, Iowa. More of the Mueller Report is coming soon. I'm Richard Jordan, Fox News. Attorney General Bill Barr says he will release most of the Mueller Report by mid-April, if not sooner. President Trump says he approves. If that's what he'd like to do, uh, I have nothing to hide. This was a hoax. This was a witch hunt. Uh, I have absolutely nothing to hide. And I think a lot of things are coming out with respect to the other side. But uh, I have a lot of confidence in the attorney general. Barr has already said special counsel Robert Mueller did not find any evidence of collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia leading up to the 2016 election. Barr says the White House will not get an advanced copy of the report coming out next month, but portions will be redacted. Meanwhile, President Trump says he might close the U.S.-Mexico border. The president on Twitter warning if Mexico doesn't immediately stop all illegal immigration coming into the United States through our southern border, I will be closing the border or large sections of the border next week. He continued this would be so easy for Mexico to do, but they just take our money and talk. Besides, we lose so much money with them, especially when you add in drug trafficking, etc., that the border closing would be a good thing. The president writing earlier, Congress must change our weak immigration laws now and Mexico must stop illegals from entering the U.S. At the White House, John Decker, Fox News. The head of the Small Business Administration is stepping down to help get the president reelected. Linda McMahon says it has been an honor to serve. President Trump said the former wrestling executive who founded the WWE has done an outstanding job and will now join his re-election effort. Wall Street Now stocks closed higher, ending the first quarter with its biggest quarterly gain in a decade. The Dow climbed 211 points. The S&P rose nearly 19 points. The Nasdaq up 60. Ride-sharing company Lyft debuted on the Nasdaq, closing at 78.29. This is Fox News. The Tradition. The suspense, the race. The Kentucky Derby is the pinnacle of horse racing. Rocket Mortgage is giving away 20 VIP trips to witness the Kentucky Derby in person. And one lucky winner will receive $250,000. Use it to purchase your dream home or pay off your mortgage. Enter today at homestretchsweepstakes.com. Oh, come the The fashion. The mint juleps, the parties. This is your opportunity to experience it all firsthand, thanks to the Rocket Mortgage Home Stretch Sweepstakes. Enter for your chance to win two hundred fifty thousand dollars and one of twenty VIP trips to the Kentucky Derby. The Rocket Mortgage Home Stretch Sweepstakes. Enter today at homestretchsweepstakes.com. No purchase necessary. 21 years or older. Ends on April 7, 2019. Homestretchsweepstakes.com. Equal housing lender. Licensed in all 50 states. And MLS number 3030. Islam. Your news, your town, your station. KBFD News when it breaks. Good afternoon. I'm Alex Benzigal with the KBFD Afternoon News. The Iowa House has unanimously approved a bill that would increase the penalties for animal mistreatment. The measure approved Thursday by a vote of 96 to 0 moves to the Senate. The bill heightens the criminal penalties for animal abuse and neglect, animal torture and abandonment. Animal welfare advocates have long considered Iowa among the worst states for mistreatment of animals in puppy mills. The state has thousands of dogs and more than 200 large-scale breeding operations. Under the House-backed bill, failure to provide an animal with access to food, drinkable water, sanitary shelter, veterinary care, and grooming could be considered animal abuse, punishable by two years in prison. A second offense would be a felony carrying up to five years in prison. Animal torture, which is intentionally causing prolonged suffering or death would be a felony punishable up to five years. Abandoning an animal could carry a 30-day jail sentence, a year in jail if the animal is injured, or two years if it sustains a serious injury. The Fort Dodge Community School District announced on Thursday that Stacy Laird will be the next Fort Dodge Senior High School principal starting with the 2019-2020 school year. Laird currently serves as an assistant principal at FDSH. She replaces Ken Hayes, who accepted a position in the educational leadership program at the University of Northern Iowa. Organizers of a rally a few hours before Saturday's presidential candidate forum in Storm Lake say shrinking market options for farmers must be addressed. As Radio Iowa's O.K. Henderson reports, many of the Democratic candidates who've been traveling through Iowa this year already have focused on consolidation and mergers in the agricultural sector. Last August, New Jersey Senator Cory Booker proposed a moratorium on all corporate mergers. He argues federal antitrust laws aren't being followed and that's creating real problems for family farmers. 
Booger said during a recent Radio Iowa interview that the result is stagnant wages while corporate profits are at an 80-year high. So these trends continue. The very sort of fundamentals of our democracy are going to begin to unravel. And you're going to see a lot more people calling for more extremism uh, uh, in our country because they don't believe the democratic system or the economic system can work for them anymore. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders made a campaign swing through Iowa earlier this month and denounced concentration in the meatpacking industry as well as the Bayer-Monsanto merger. Neither Sanders nor Booker will be in Storm Lake for the Saturday afternoon candidate forum, but two other U.S. senators who are running for president will be. Senator Amy Klobuchar has been telling Iowa audiences she's been able to bridge the rural-urban divide in Minnesota. Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren has been calling for the breakup of monopolies and this week pledged to appoint federal officials who would reverse anti-competitive mergers like the Bayer-Monsanto merger. Radio Iowa, I'm O.K. Henderson. I'm Alex Benzigal with the KVFD Afternoon News. Have a great day. Here's the AM 1400 KVFD weatherology forecast. Chance for scattered showers tonight, otherwise clouds. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, Broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studios, it's the Dave Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. Thanks for hanging out with us, America. We're glad you're here. The phone number is 888 825 That's 888 825 Sean is in Phoenix, Arizona. Hi, Sean. How are you? I am fantastic, Dave. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? Well, uh, where do I start? Well, I'm a machinist apprentice um, full-time. I work 55 hours a week there, uh, 18 hours as a pizza delivery driver. Thank you. Um, I go to school three hours a night, four days a week. And I'm married. I uh, have two kids living with us. We want to teach them a, a little about finances and whatnot. Um, uh, how can I help see. today? So I want to know how to budget my tips and also... How to budget um, your what? My tips. Your tips. Okay. Yes. For a, a delivery driver. Okay, cool. Well, basically, you've got some income here that's not predictable. When you have an irregular, unpredictable income... What we teach you to do is to do a budget with what you know that you know you're going to have coming in, and that's just do a regular budget, spend every dollar on paper, use the every dollar app, and and then make a list of what you want to do that you couldn't get to in the regular budget or you need to do that you couldn't get to in the regular budget. And then you make that list and, and you look at it and you say, what's the most important thing on the list? And then what's the next most important thing on the list? And you rewrite that list in order of most important to least important of the things you couldn't get to in the regular budget. Then when you have tips come in, you just go as far down that list each time as you can. Okay. Any of your irregular income that you can't predict, just go as far down the list as you can, as far down the list as you can, as far down the list as you can, and it's always a prioritized spending plan. If you have the Total Money Makeover book or any of the other books that I have written in the back is a set of forms, and one of the forms is the irregular income planning form, and that'll work well for that. Uh, it'll show you exactly what to do, but you can also do it with the every dollar budget. You just redo the budget. When the tips come in, you figure out, okay, what have I not gotten to that I want to get to? And you just add it in there and do it. Kevin is with us in Sacramento. Hi, Kevin. How are you? I'm doing well, Dave. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. How can I help? Um, well, so 54 years old, um, been working hard all my life, and I've got quite a bit of equity in between our um, primary residence and a couple of rentals. And I'm kind of feeling like I want to sell off the rentals and take that equity, pay off the primary, and then just focus on piling money away for the next 10 years. I'm wondering, it, it, you know, is that the best thing to do? I know you in the past, I've heard a similar question, and you usually say there's no wrong answer. But for me, I'm, I'm tired of feeling like... Uh, you know, we're just constantly paying out money um, on on the rentals. 
and the primary, and I'm wondering what's the best path. Okay, you know to so to be in, uh, paying out money. You mean on repairs or the payments? Well, no, 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 not, not so much because I, I'm in contracting and I can take care of all of that stuff. I just I'm tired of the mortgage debt. We we've got okay. no other debt, and so gotcha. so how much you know, do you I'm own just, your personal residence? Um, two fifty. Okay, and what are your equities totaling up on the rentals? Um. On on the rentals themselves. If, if you sold all the uh, rentals, what pile of cash would be in the middle of the kitchen table? Two eighty. Okay, so basically, you pay off your house if you sold all the rentals. Exactly. Okay, and what do you? What's your household income? About one eighty. Okay, and then you're going to use that over the next ten years to build your nest egg. Exactly. Okay. Um. Or what is what is owed? On, what is the total the debt rentals. on the rentals? Um, just under 200. Okay. So the only other alternative is to take the 180 and pay off $450,000 worth of debt during the next 10 years while investing into mutual funds. Correct. And that's doable. It is. I'm I'm just wondering, is there one that's a better path than the other? I think the answer to that would depend on how you feel about real estate. I like real estate. And so my tendency is going to be to hold the real estate and get it paid off. But if you're not, if you detest being a landlord, you detest dealing with these rentals. How many properties are there? Um, Just two besides their primary. Okay. And the other thing you could do is you could, which, which, uh, do do they have about the same amount of equity in them? Um, Yes. Pretty close. Okay. So you could do a half flight way plan and dump one of them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, one's 160, one's 120, actually. So, yeah, so one's could, more than the other. Yeah, you could dump the 160 one and keep the other one. And then, you know, then all, then all you got to do is just really concentrate on getting the other. T- that would shorten the time that it takes you to get out of debt. Um, meanwhile, putting 15% of your income away and you're making good income in, into, you know, into mutual funds, into your retirement mm-hmm. plans and so forth. Uh, that's going to be my tendencies to hold uh, one of these and work my way through it. But it's not a, like you said, I, I've said before, it's not a wrong answer here because these are baby step six items and it typically takes seven to 10 years to clear baby step six. Okay. And uh, okay. from the time somebody starts, um, the good news is as long as that income holds, you know, you've got a fabulous income. Yeah, it just, it, that's the issue. It just hasn't felt like, <laughs> mm-hmm. so I, I, you know, now that, uh, now that we're paying attention to everything and I, I, you know, it's a completely different ball game. It's just, uh, you know, I really like the idea of getting everything paid off as fast as possible. Okay. So, it doesn't hurt anything. I, I, I listen, I can promise you this, you will feel a, a, a measurable release from around your neck when you sell those two and pay off your house. And that's kind of kind of what I'm thinking. And then just use some of that. You'll have cash flow coming out your ears. Use some yeah. of that. You can save up and buy another rental. Cash. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so. just reset. You know, do a reset here. And in the meantime, again, I'm going to go back. I want you to be loading those mutual funds up, 15% of your income going into retirement while we're doing that. Well, at that point, I mean, I'd probably max out everything that's available to your retirement and then on the side, start saving in something like an S&P 500 until you save like 100, 150 and then go back and buy a rental for cash. Okay. I, li- I like the sound of that. As far as paying off these mortgages, um, always pay off the primary first? Yeah, all things being equal. I mean, if you got a, if you had a $500,000 primary and a $40,000 rental, we'd pay off the rental. But, right. but if they're, but in this case where they everything's about the same, I would, I would do the primary first, but I, you know, the reset, the more we sit here and talk about it, I'm just, ma- I'm doing this on the air in front of everybody. But I mean, I kind of like in the reset, I, I like real estate. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't fight you too much if you wanted to hold on to them, but just selling everything and, and laying everything out solid, you know, and, and just zero debt starting in the next week when the rentals sell and they'll sell fast. You're in a good market to max out your values. And then just build up a pile of-